Welcome, Dr. Michelle Sands. We are doing an informal hormone Q and A today. So we're talking about hormone replacement therapy. We're talking about menopause. We're talking about perimenopause. We're talking about the symptoms of hormone decline. We're talking about if hormone replacement therapy is right for you, wrong for you. When should you do it? How long can you do it? When do you have to stop? Do you have to stop? All the questions, all the answers. Welcome. I thank you for guys popping in the chat. You can hear me and see me. So if you're watching live. You can say hi in the chat. You can let me know where you're joining from and then pop your questions in the Q&A box, which is on the dashboard on Zoom. Now, if you're watching the replay, pop your question in the comment below and I do go in and answer pretty much all the questions on the replays. And I will answer as many questions as I can today. We have my mother-in-law and father-in-law are here right now. And so we are going to go to dinner and I have about an hour and a half to stay with you guys today. But because we had so many questions, we this week, by the way, you guys, this week was an amazing week. We had thousands upon thousands, over 10,000 women stepped up to get answers about their perimenopause and menopause symptoms. That is amazing. Kudos to all you guys who took time out of your busy schedules to really learn and empower yourself. That just lights me up. And there are over 1,700 questions that I don't want to leave anyone hanging because I know in conventional medicine, you go to your doctor and they don't have any answers for you. Our moms didn't tell us what to expect. We have the birds and the bees talk. When we're little, 12, 13, we're going into puberty, we get the talk, the birds and the bees talk. We learn about what's going to happen to our body. We know that we're going to have a period. We're going to bleed every month. We learn about getting pregnant, how that happens, how to prevent that. But now we're in our late 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Nobody tells us what's going to happen to our body. And we think we're going nuts. We think we're insane. We think we're broken. We think we're not eating right. We're not exercising enough. There's something wrong with us or we're going crazy or we're lazy. And that's not the case at all. This is all symptoms of hormone decline. I don't know if you guys got the email from us, but we, I just created a free download. That is the 99 symptoms of hormone decline. Yes, 99 symptoms from head to toe. So there's so many things that we don't even realize are just normal symptoms of our estrogen and our progesterone declining because we have estrogen and progesterone receptors on nearly every cell in our body. And estrogen is, a, is really responsible for over five to 700 different functions in our body, including reducing inflammation, protecting our heart, helping us to maintain lean muscle, making us feel happy and have that reward center in our brain. It's connected to dopamine and serotonin, gut health. I, the list goes on and on. But I, this is not about me talking. This is about answering your questions. Go ahead and pop the questions in the Q&A. We're going to go ahead and get started right now. I see you guys pop it in, so thank you. Okay, it looks like there's some people raising their hands too. I'm not going to bring people on to talk today. I'm just going to answer questions from the Q&A just to keep it smooth and not to have any interruptions. So I'm going to pop right into the q and I'm also going to pull from some questions that were popular that came in over the last couple of days. Now, if you did watch my masterclass this week, and you're waiting for an answer, just know that we had over, like I'm saying right now, I want to say we had, we still have over 1700 questions to answer. So that's a lot. Me and my team have been working around the clock to get them answered. That's why I'm doing these Q and A's. I'm doing this today. I will continue to do Q and A's until I get all your questions answered. So I'm going to go ahead and start today. Can bioidentical hormone replacement help with vaginal atrophy? Absolutely. So one of the things, one of the many horrifying symptoms of hormone decline that can start as early as our 30s, I'm calling it, I've got a new term, I'm calling it millennial pause. Millennial pause is basically the millennial generation. I'm generation X, right? But if you were born between, I want to say 84 and 2002, that's the millennial generation. And they're reaching 40 now. They're reaching the 35 to 40 range. And one of the symptoms is going to be vaginal dryness. We're all pretty much familiar with that. Another thing that happens is vaginal atrophy. So what does that mean? It means that the vaginal tissues are shrinking. So what happens? So we have this, think of your vaginal tissues, like your vagina is the canal. 
And then outside the canal, there's padding and it's like a very good blood flow and there's nerve endings. And it's like a plush, like a plush mattress. And then that plush mattress starts to thin out and it becomes like a thin piece of cardboard. And so if you go from a plush mattress to a thin piece of cardboard, you're going to have painful sex. You're going to have less feeling and sensation and have less enjoyment of sex. And it's going to hurt. The skin is going to dry out and become more fragile. So you have more chance of tearing, more chance of UTIs because of the dryness and the change in the microbiome environment. So replacing the estrogen system-wide, but also vaginally, which we do both in our Healthy Hormone Club. We have vaginal hormones and topical hormones, and that will definitely help. It does take some time. So to reverse atrophy of tissues, it can take four, six, eight, 12 months, but you will start to see some improvement definitely in the moisture, definitely in the difference in having painful sex over time. Yes, definitely. The, the wonderful thing about if you happen to be lucky enough to stumble upon this information in perimenopause prior to going into menopause, if starting early, you can prevent the atrophy from happening. But if you already have had the atrophy, if you're you're listening to this after you've gone through menopause and you already are there, don't worry because the body is amazing. In naturopathic medicine, we understand that the body is incredibly regenerative and we can regrow cells, we can regrow tissues, we can regenerate. Just like if you cut your finger, what happens? You cut your finger, there's a gash in your finger, the skin is separated, you put a band-aid on, you may put some like antibiotic cream or maybe just leave it, get some air, keep it clean. And two weeks go by and you look at your finger and there's no cut there, there's no hole, there's no remnant of the cut. If it was a big cut, maybe there's a little scar because your body has made it even stronger. But my point is that we can grow back tissues and the same is true with our vaginal tissue. So yes, Julie, you can definitely, will definitely help. Let's see. I've had a hysterectomy over eight years ago and not, have not had any hormone supplementation since then. Is it dangerous for me to start getting hormone replacement now? Absolutely not. Unfortunately, whoever your practitioners were when you got your hysterectomy, they should have given you the option at least to start hormone replacement therapy because menopause is like what happens in perimenopause is your hormones start to gradually decline, your estrogen and progesterone start to drop, and then when you hit menopause, they can go automatically down. When you get a hysterectomy, if you've had your ovaries removed, then you automatically go straight into menopause with no, nothing gradual at all. So it's always a good idea to replace them, but absolutely, there's no harm whatsoever if you do bioidentical hormones and you do them in a physiological dose. Topical hormones have the least side effects as far as topically applied hormones do not have any increased incidence of blood clotting or strokes like oral hormones do. So topical bioidentical hormones, dosed appropriately for you, that means get a test and let's see where your hormone levels are at and then dose appropriately for you. There's actually absolutely no harm at all and you can prevent a lot of the negative effects of hormone decline, such as heart disease, dementia, osteoporosis, depression, anxiety, the list goes on and on. Perfect. Let's see. Debbie says, I've struggled. Oh no, I've signed up, but I have two daughters and both of them are struggling since coming off birth control. Having random periods several times a month, they're 21 and 24. Could they also benefit from this or is it just for menopausal women? If your daughter is 21 and 24, pretty new to coming off birth control, it is very common for them to have erratic cycles because birth control suppresses the natural hormone release and the natural cycle. So I would still give them a good year of anti-inflammatory diet, plenty of healthy fat, getting exercise, making sure their vitamin D is adequate, omega-3 fatty acids, doing some restorative exercise. So if they're not like beating their bodies up with hit training every day or CrossFit every day, some yoga, some Tai Chi, some stress reduction, just nurture their bodies and they should be fine as unless they have ovarian failure or another situation. There are some situations where girls as young as 16 can benefit from hormone replacement therapy, but generally healthy girls just coming off of birth control 
usually don't need hormone replacement. They just need to nurture their body back so their ovaries can start making those hormones again in the proper amounts and their cycles can get back to normal. Now, if you're in your, your 40s, 50s and beyond, your ovaries are already in the process of the decline and that's when you're going to need hormone replacement therapy pretty much across the board. Most women are going to need some degree of it to maintain optimal health. Which is best for postmenopausal women? Estradiol or estriol? I definitely want a plant-based estrogen. So actually both. So estradiol is the stronger of the estrogens. It's the one that does pretty much all the things that we think about when we talk about estrogen replacement or the benefits of estrogen. So it builds our bones, it helps with our muscle, helps with our brain, helps with dryness, helps with inflammation, supports heart health. All the things that we think about helps control hot flashes. Our skin helps with support collagen and elastin so we don't have dry, wrinkled, crepey skin. However, estriol, that is the weaker estrogen. And that is, it's thought of in, in conventional circles as the pregnancy hormone. So it's the hormone that goes, gets increased. It's made by the placenta and it gets elevated during pregnancy. However, estriol is really great for vaginal dryness. It's also really great to help estradiol do its job. And it's cancer protective. It's very much cancer protective. So it takes the place of where it blocks the ability for cancer to, to duplicate. And with cancer cells, it's the duplicating that is the problem. Because we all have cancer cells, but when they start multiplying, that becomes the problem. So estriol is cancer protective. So in our practice, whenever we, we replace estrogen, we do it in a combination of estradiol and estriol, because that's actually what the body expects to not just have one estrogen, but to have both of those estrogens, and then your fat cells make estrone, which is the third estrogen. So we don't need, we don't really need to replace that at all. But definitely replacing estradiol and estriol, that's your best combination. And bioidentical hormones are derived from plants. A bioidentical hormone, the original, the very first bioidentical hormones back in like the 40s, those were actually made from human urine. So the urine of pregnant women, they would actually take that extract it, they would extract out the estrogens and they would actually make that into, encapsulate it and make it into a hormone replacement. That really wasn't sustainable and they weren't able to get that out to the masses. So they went to synthetic hormones, which they started using the urine of pregnant horses, which if you're a woman and you're a horse, two different things, horses have different estrogens, none of them are identical to female estrogen. However, some of the horse estrogens that they used in the synthetic oral primarin, pregnant mare's urine, that it did actually help with some of the symptoms of menopause, but there's other issues that can come from that. And so bioidentical hormones, those actually are made from a chemical component that's found in some plants, the wild yam or the Mexican yam and soy. So in our practice, we only use hormones that are derived from the chemical component in organic wild yams, and it's called diosgenin. That is diosgenin is the name of what they extract from the, those plants. So there's no yam or soy in bioidentical hormones, but there's a chemical component that is made in those plants so that those plants have that is part of their makeup, just like we are made of hydrogen and atoms and carbons, but if you take one of those hydrogen atoms out of a human, that atom is not a human, it's just the hydrogen. The diogenin comes out of those yams and then it has to go into a lab. And if you remember chemistry class, if you remember seeing the chemical structure of different, different molecules, you, you'll remember there's these little octagons and they're linked together and some have little tail, tails and some have two lines and some have one line. They remove some of those little parts and what's left is bioidentical progesterone, bioidentical testosterone, bioidentical estrogen. And so those are exactly the chemical structure as what's in our body. So when we replace those, it's like a locking key. It's exactly what the body is expecting. And if you go to a doctor like myself, who believes in doing things as nature intended, then you will get dosed in a way that is physiological. So what that means is not 
super high doses where the body is like, what am I going to do with all these hormones? It's just what the body would naturally make when you're in your hormonal optimal state, usually in like your 20s and 30s. So that's what we replace back to so that you can have that optimal health. So hopefully that makes sense. And I know that was a long answer to a short question, <laughs> but that's basically how they're made. Let's see. Have there been any double blind studies done on bioidentical hormones? Yeah, there have been some studies done and I have links to those. If you email us at support at glonoptionwellness.com or you can look them up. Mostly done in other countries. There's one in Denmark and one in France. I think one in the UK. However, also any studies done on human hormones are the same as studies that are on bioidentical hormones because the same exact chemical structure. So we're just matching. It's just like when you replace right? when you replace insulin or a thyroid hormone, it's the same exact thing. But synthetic hormones, they're slightly different, so they're not the exact match. Now, the Women's Health Initiative study that was done in 2002, that was a study that gave hormones a bad name. And actually, when you look at the study, because there's been plenty of reanalysis um, studies since. When you look at the study, they actually, so they had two arms of the study. There is women who had a uterus who got estrogen, of course, estrogen, the primarin, plus a synthetic progestin, and they got the combination therapy. And synthetic hormones were used because that was what was popular to give at the time to people in the United States. And that's where the study was done. So that's why they use synthetic hormones. So they, there was one group that got synthetic coarse estrogen and synthetic progestin. So not progesterone, progestin, which is different. And then the other group of the other arm of the study, those were women who had a hysterectomy and did not have a uterus. So they were just given the estrogen alone. And these were oral hormones given to these women, synthetic oral hormones. After, I forget how many years, like four or five years, they went back and they said, oh my God, the group that is getting the horse estrogen, the progestin, they are having a higher incidence of breast cancer and clotting. And so they stopped the study. And, but the group that got the estrogen only, they actually had less incidence of breast cancer. And then when they looked at the analysis, so the headlines went out, it's like hormones cause breast cancer, hormones cause increased risk of heart disease and stroke. But when you look at the actual numbers of the study, the, even the group that had the synthetic oral progestin and the synthetic horse estrogen together, they had, out of 1,000 women, there was an extra one case of cancer in that study, and they weren't controlling the study for lifestyle, diet, um, weight, and most of the, a lot of those women that got the cancer were overweight, they drank more than two drinks of alcohol per day, they ate inflammatory foods, so we don't really know if it was because of the hormones or not, but we do know that synthetic oral progestin and also any oral estrogen can cause an issue with the liver making in, increased clotting factors, enzymes that cause clotting. So that's why we never give oral estrogen and we never give synthetic progestin. We only give bioidentical topical estrogen and progesterone can be given oral or topically as long as it's bioidentical. And so that, that's what that study said. But unfortunately, the headlines came out and with doctors, they immediately pulled their women off their hormones. It was very common for a woman to go to the doctor before 2002 and say that she wasn't feeling well and get put on hormones. Now, after the study, a lot of doctors will not give hormones because they believe they cause cancer, even though in 2019, the, in San Antonio, there was a cancer symposium where 19 different prestigious cancer universities did a reanalysis, and they actually proved that hormones do not cause cancer. Estrogen specifically does not cause cancer and it actually reduces the incidence of cancer. In fact, women who take hormone replacement therapy with topical bioidentical estrogen are actually have at lower risk, significantly lower risk of getting breast cancer specifically, but also colon cancer, other types of cancer as well. And they're actually protected after they finish taking it. So just having that dose of it for the additional time, once you stop making the estrogen, just having the estrogen for 5, 10, 15 years, you're protected even after that. On top of that, 
women who are on hormone replacement therapy actually have a better recovery should they get cancer or breast cancer than women who don't. It makes sense because other things that help that are cancer preventative include having pregnancies. So when you have a pregnancy, you have a period of time where your estrogen and progesterone are sky high. When you're pregnant, your hormones are super high. And the more pregnancies you have, the more protection you have against getting breast cancer. And so that makes sense that the additional hormones actually are preventative. Now, if estrogen caused cancer, pregnant women would be the highest risk group. Those would be the people that were beginning cancer diagnoses all the time. But when you look at who is getting diagnosed with cancer, it's usually women who have hormone decline or depleted hormones due to menopause. So you have to think about it. And I actually have a bunch of studies that were done. Also, if you want some reading material, I don't even want you to take my word for it. There's a wonderful book called Estrogen Matters, and it's written by an oncologist, a cancer researcher. And so that's a book you can get on Amazon. It's called Estrogen Matters, has a lot of research in there. And then one of my favorite doctors who does so much research on hormones and hormone replacement therapy and their safety. Her name is Devaki Lindsay Berkson, and she wrote a paper called Estrogen Vindication. Estrogen Vindication, you can Google it. It's been published in several different places, and she does a whole analysis. There's actually three parts to it, and it is super, super interesting research. It has all the references. And she just did a great job of outlining all. And she was actually at that 2019 cancer symposium in San Antonio. And she's been part of a lot of these research groups that have done a lot of research on hormone replacement therapy. And she actually is a breast cancer survivor and she is an advocate of hormone replacement therapy for women who have had breast cancer. So I just wanted to share that. Does tamoxifen affect the HRT? So tamoxifen is a hormone suppressing drug. And so you wouldn't want to be taking hormones if you're on a hormone suppressing drug because that, because that would be counterproductive. So we usually recommend once you're off your hormone suppressing medications, then you can start hormone replacement therapy, but definitely speak with your doctor. So tamoxifen is usually given to women who have a breast cancer diagnosis to less hormones. But what was interesting is until tamoxifen came out about 1974 and up until 1974, do you know what they used to help re women recover from the static breast cancer? It was estrogen. They would give estrogen to help women recover. And then tamoxifen came out and that became the go-to standard of care medication. Anyways, <laughs> that's just a story for another time. But no, I wouldn't recommend doing both together because you're kind of counteracting the purpose of the drug. And my question is, when I was younger, I couldn't use birth control pills. My body just didn't like the hormones. And so birth control pills are synthetic hormones. So the interesting thing is birth control pills come with the same, same detrimental side effects as synthetic hormones. However, doctors will often tell women who are in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, hormones are bad for you. Don't take hormones. Hormone replacement is bad, but then they'll prescribe a birth control pill to the next woman that comes in the office. So they do, they are synthetic hormones. They're not actually hormones. They're actually hormone-like endocrine disruptors because they, they act to disrupt your cycle. Okay, I realized they were not natural concerned about having the same reaction. And also by birth control pills, everyone gets the same dose. They're not testing your hormones to see where you're at and then choosing which hormones you need to balance you. It's just suppress your hormones. It's usually either progestin, which is a, a hormone that causes the clotting, or it can be estrogen, synthetic estrogen and synthetic progestin together. I would say that's not did horrible on birth control pills too, but I think hormone replacement is amazing. So I would say it's not an indication that you would have an issue on hormone replacement therapy because it's going to be customized specifically to you. And not everybody's going to be on the same dose. So one woman might need a tiny bit of estrogen and more progesterone and some DHEA to improve her testosterone numbers. And another woman might need, her testosterone might be fine and she might need a lot more estrogen and equal amounts of progesterone. So it's going to be different for everybody. Let's see, does DHEA raise testosterone levels sufficiently to help with libido? Absolutely. You can raise DHEA as a precursor to testosterone and in women it will increase testosterone 
it will, the DHA will convert at 50% to testosterone. So you can raise testosterone above what's healthy for women with DHEA. Uh, and topical DHEA is wonderful because DHEA is also important for sex drive. It's also important for energy. It's also important for anti-aging. So you're getting two, two, two bangs for the buck. You can also take testosterone and do the same thing, but DHEA is going to be a little gentler. It's you're going to be less likely to have the negative effects of hair loss, belly fat gain, facial hair, and things like that. Although that can still happen if you take too much DHEA. So we have to be careful. We want to make sure that we don't over, over medicate on the hormones and we always start slow and then we can always increase. But yeah, so def definitely does help with libido and then vaginal DHEA can be amazing for improving sensation, improving sex drive and, and overall enjoyment of sex in general. But you can get a prescription for testosterone as well. It's, there's more than, there's always more than one way to do everything. There's many different ways to replace hormones. In our practice, we just go with the safest and the way that is tolerable for most women and the easiest to adjust. And so that's how we like to do it. How long is it safe to take the HRT for? As long as you want to, as long as you are testing on a regular basis. So in our practice, we test every four months. So it's always good to see where your levels are at. And then also maintaining a healthy lifestyle, so eating an anti-inflammatory diet, getting exercise, getting out in the sun, doing stress reduction. The, all those things still apply if you're on hormone replacement therapy. It's not like, oh, now you're putting hormones on or now you're taking hormones and now you don't need to do any of the other things. So it's all important. Yeah, there's no, there's absolutely no reason. Even the North American Menopause Society, NAMS, their most recent statement in 2022 did say that women do not have to be taken off their hormones. It used to be that there was a limit, like you should only be on for five years or you should only be on for 10 years. And that really applies to synthetic hormones because they do some damage to the body. But bioidentical hormones only add more health. They're only more anti-inflammatory. They're anti-dementia, anti-Alzheimer, anti-cancer anti heart disease. So the longer you're on them, the actual better, the longer you're going to live. There's no reason to limit. However, if you are on synthetic hormones or if you're on oral hormones, then you probably should limit your duration to as short as possible. And then consider going a more natural route, switching to bioidentical hormone replacements, switching to a topical route of delivery, because that's a safer way to do it. It doesn't have any impact on your liver. So hopefully that's helpful. And as far as like cancer is concerned, you want to make sure that if you are replacing your estrogen, that you have good estrogen detox pathways and you have good gut health. When we, this is true for even when you're not replacing your hormones, when you're making your hormones normally in your younger years, the hormones, they basically, you, your body uses them and then they have to be packaged up the used hormones and excreted from the body. So the hormones get broken down into three different pathways, one of which can lead to DNA damage and can then go on to be carcinogenic and cause be a leading cause of cancer. So you want to make sure that your hormones are breaking down the proper pathway. And this can be done with a hormone metabolite test. You can see how you're doing. Some people genetically have a preference for breaking the hormones down the perfect pathway. And some people have a genetic preference for not doing that so great. And so what you can do is you can supplement with something like DIM, which is a compound found in cruciferous vegetables. And that helps to push that healthier pathway. Also B vitamins, N-acetylcysteine. There's a lot of things you can do naturally to help promote that healthier estrogen detox pathway. So we always make sure that we include those things with our hormone replacement therapy. So we usually recommend my multivitamin called Daily Glow, which has support for a healthy estrogen detox. Then once it gets broken down into those three different components, then it needs to be excreted from the body. And this is done in your gut and your microbiome through the estrobolum. So the estrobolum has a compound called beta-glucuronidase, and that helps to keep the estrogen path 
packaged up so it can get excreted in your stool. So if you're constipated, if you don't have a healthy microbiome, then you might be recirculating those estrogens. So it's always a good idea to maintain optimal health, take a probiotic, eat probiotic foods and prebiotic foods, make sure you're pooping every day. If you're not, maybe take some extra magnesium, some slippery elm, vitamin C, even Vedic formula like triphala to help make sure that you're having regular bowel movements, drinking your water, eating plenty of fiber, 25 grams of fiber at minimum per day. And those things are going to help you to support healthy estrogen detox. Please re-explain the differences made by... Oh, please re-explain differences of BHRT made by compounding labs versus your BHRT products. Okay, so a compounding lab is a lab that the pharmacist works there and they have up on their shelves. So I have some hormones up in my shelves, right? So up on their shelves, they have estrogen, they have progesterone, they have all these different things. And then they have the base cream. And then they, so they, what they do is they have, it's like a getting, going to, it's like going to a restaurant and it's made to order. Oh, uh, hello. Come on in. Oh, the prize patrol is here, you guys. Uh, so if you've been on before, you know that we like to give away prizes on our Q&A. So Pax, come on in. We got some prizes today. Uh, you, what, what do you want to give away first? All those, yeah. We're going to do a book and a thing. You want to give, we never give away this before. You want to give this away? Yeah. Okay, so the first thing we're going to give away is my favorite. This is my favorite Thumbluck. So it's Elta MD, it's UV Glow, it's SPF 36, and it's a facial sunscreen, and it's really nice. It doesn't make you break out, and it's not shiny or anything. So we're going to give this away with a copy of my book. I'm going to sign it for you, and the book is for right now. And then, so all you got to do if you want to win the prize is what do you want them to put in the chat today? This is my son Paxton. He loves to give away prizes to you guys. What do you want to put in the chat? Do you want to ask them to put some, some a word in the chat today? Or just yeah. All right, you guys. Oh, they're already saying Pax and Pick Me. All right, what word do you want to put? What's the word of the, the day? The first word, word I thought of, and that would be fraud. Frog. Okay, put frog in the chat. Oh, they're putting frog. <laughs> <laughs> frog, like the animal. Rivet, rivet. Frog in the chat. <laughs> okay, and then so you go ahead and you pick somebody for a winner. We're going to do three, three things. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> what, 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 would you just do that? That means you draw the mouse. Okay. You go to the chat. Oh, you're in the chat here. Oh, right here. You can sit here. I wonder how you take too long. Just pick a name. We're not going to take too long if you let me sit. Okay. Oh, you have to sit down? Okay. All right, you guys. Paxton is going to take over this, and then I'll answer the question about the hormones. All right, so Wendy Contreras, you have won the Elta MD sunscreen and my book. So just email support at glownaturalwellness.com. Tell us what you won and your address where we can send it. So we'll do that at a soon. Oh, wait, pass in another prize. All right, ready? All right, we're going to do another book and Glow PM. This is my nighttime supplement for better sleep, craving control, better moods, less enhanced metabolism, and less anxiety. Go ahead and pick one. It's still up on the side there. Yeah, I, why would I be strong? Who's that? All right, MK, if your name is MK and you wrote fraud in the chat, Go ahead. You are the winner. So MK is your name, your screen name. You're going to get the Glow PM and the book. And then we're also going to give away this Paxton with another book. So this is Upgraded Magnesium. This is made by my friend Barton Scott. And it's really high quality magnesium that is great for calm, focus, and deep sleep. So we're going to give this away with a book. Put that down and pick one more person. Okay, this is going to be the last price for right now. And if you're watching the replay, we will do this again for you guys as well. So just also put frog in the chat. We could turn. He, he lands on the MK again. Wow. Oh. Julie Grote. So you got the frog emojis in fact that caught Paxson's eye. You won the upgraded magnesium and a copy of my book as well. Thank you very much, Price Michelle Paxson. All right, take care. I'll see you later. All right. Yeah, we like to do that. It's passing. Let's give. Have a good time.
time, everybody, especially the winners. Oh, okay. Paxton said to have a good time. Awesome. So hopefully that was fun for you guys. I'm going to go back to the q and I think I was, oh yeah, I was asking about the difference between compounding labs and our BHRT products. Like pharmacy, like I said, it's kind of made to order. So they, they pull all the different ingredients and your prescription will come in from your doctor and it'll say one gram for each gram of the prescription, you need to have this much estrogen, this much progesterone, this much whatever, vitamin D, maybe they're putting in it, and, and then the base cream. And so the prescription does not call out what's in the base cream, but it does specify how much estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA, whatever they're putting in it. And, and then the pharmacist mixes it up, packages it, puts the label on it, and then you can pick that up. So it's specifically for you. Now, the controversy around compounding pharmacies is that there's no, there's not an FDA official standing there next to that pharmacist as he's mixing everything up to ensure that he actually put in the amount that was told and he actually put the right amount of progesterone and the phone didn't ring and he wasn't like, oh, did I put the estrogen in there? I'm not sure. Let me put it in again. And so they're saying, so the controversy is it's not regulated. Although those individual ingredients, those are USP, United States Pharmacopeia certified for purity, that they're actually what they say they are, that they're the strength that they say they are. So it's a, basically the controversy is around, can we trust that pharmacist? The pharmacies are generally, they're, they have to have certain standards. And the thing that I notice with my patients I work with is sometimes the base cream can change. And so sometimes the effectiveness of the, if you're getting a topical, sometimes the effectiveness might be different based on the base cream, or sometimes maybe it is a little stronger, it is a little weaker, because maybe they measured a little bit heavier, a little bit lighter. And so that's compounding. Then our hormones, those are actually manufactured at an FDA approved lab. They are packaged and labeled and certified for exactly what's in each of the hormones. And so in the bottle is a specific amount of hormones per pump. And we actually, each person, we tell you how many pumps you're going to use specifically. So you might use one pump, someone else might use two pumps, someone else might use three pumps. And then we have the option to have estrogen and progesterone to combine them separated. And there's different combinations. So you, with our hormones, it is, it's always the same thing. So we, ours are not, it's not up to the pharmacist. Like we, we get basically audited by FDA and also it's a kosher lab. So we get audited by whatever the authority for kosher is and also the good manufacturing company, GMP. So there's a lot of different regulations to ensure that what we have in our hormones are exactly what's on the label. And so that's the difference is ours are standardized, but they're customized because we're going to give everybody different instructions and everyone's going to use a different amount. Whereas compounding, it's going to be made on the spot. I actually don't think there's anything wrong with compounding pharmacies because those physicians, those pharmacists, unless you don't trust the pharmacist. So that's the difference. And then on top of that, there are FDA approved pharmaceutical bioidentical hormones as well. So there's really no need ever for anyone to have a prescription for synthetic hormones. Okay. What do you think about using an IUD for progesterone? You're not using IUD for progesterone, you're actually using progestin. So there's no IUD that I'm aware of that uses actual progesterone. So the dangers of progestin, although with the IUD, they're not as high as taking oral progestin. It's just not the same as progesterone, but it's not the, it's a little bit better. I still think taking actual progesterone is going to be, you're going to get all the benefits of progesterone from actual progesterone. The progestin, that's going to give you the birth control, but it's not going to give you the reduced anxiety, the better sleep, the brain health, the digestion health. And so there's a lot of benefits of progesterone that you won't be getting with a progestin. What are the names of the best studies regarding menopausal results for in reducing breast cancer? I, I'm, although I'm a very smart doctor, I do not have these things memorized. So you can email support at glownaturalwellness.com and you can find those studies or you can get the book 
Estrogen Matters, written by an oncologist, very well researched, or you can type in Google Estrogen Vindication, and you'll find that, that paper written by Dr. Berkson with tons of studies. Hopefully that's helpful. Do HRT creams increase sugar levels and triglycerides? Actually, hormone replacement therapy actually improves your blood sugar levels because it decreases insulin resistance and it improves also cholesterol because inflammation increases when estrogen decreases. Cholesterol actually starts to go up. Risk of diabetes goes up because you have less blood sugar control and you have increased inflammation in your blood vessels and that causes a need for more cholesterol. So it actually is the opposite. So hormone replacement therapy actually improves those things. Let's see, I've been on estradiol biweekly patches at 100 milligrams at night. Is this acceptable at age 67? As long as you're feeling well and your doctor is testing your levels, I feel it is acceptable as long as you're being monitored. Let's see, hello, Rosie Marie. Let's see, I just sent the above question whether any double blind studies. Yep, there are, you just need to do your research. See, hi, let's see. I had a total hysterectomy, no ovaries when I was 36, now 56, having lots of issues, urinary tract stuff, been through a lot. I'm sorry to hear that. There are, let's see, they are thinking hormone issues, like definitely hormone issues. If you had your ovaries out at 36, you immediately went into menopause. So you're you would have started having all of the issues of hormone decline. So the dryness, the increased risk of osteoporosis, increased risk of heart disease, the more rigid blood vessels, the inflamed blood vessels, trouble with blood sugar stabilization. The list goes on and on. Let's see. I've not been on any hormones. That sucks that you weren't on hormones. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to say it that way. This is how I feel. Let's see. I react to vaginal cream. Um, you might try different ones. So just because you reacted to one is probably a base cream. That is the issue. We are coming out with, and I just designed it. So I just got the samples. When we'll be able to release them, the actual product probably within, I would say in the next four weeks, I'm hoping to have them before Christmas at least. There are vaginal moisturizers that have a little bit of estrogen, a little bit of DHEA, and they are absolutely amazing. They're like a gel, not really a cream, but they are amazing. And I, I've used the samples myself, and they're, I think that those might be really good. They're so soothing. Let's see, I don't know what to do anymore. And you may want to try some topical hormone replacement because that will actually help system-wide. It takes a little longer when you do topical hormone replacement, whether you do creams or you do a patch for it to trickle down almost. So it gets all of your different problems, but the joint pain will definitely help. The brain fog can help and it will eventually help your vaginal dryness. So you don't always have to do it vaginally, but also just a vaginal moisturizer. There's a brand that I like called Good Clean Love and they make a personal moisturizer. They also make lubricants for intimacy, but definitely like we moisturize our face, right? Every day, most women, they moisturize their face, sometimes their hands. You got to moisturize your vaginal tissues too, because they start to dry out. Even just doing that and some hormone replacement, I think can be really helpful for you because you are at more risk for osteoporosis and heart disease and dementia and Alzheimer's because of the young age that you were, had to remove your ovaries. So definitely, I would totally recommend that. How to decide doses of estrogen and progesterone? Well, definitely, I don't recommend DIYing that yourself. Definitely work with a skilled and trained practitioner who understands hormones and also looks at your symptoms and also tests your hormones to see where you're at. And those levels, those dosing can change over time based on your situation, based on where you are in your menopause journey, based on your stress levels and other things that are going on your need for hormone dosing can change. And so having someone that's testing you on a regular basis to see where you're at, there, there's a range. There's an optimal range. Not everybody's going to be at the same exact number. Some people feel better lower in the range. Some people feel better higher in the range, but there's an optimal range. And there's also a range that you don't want to really go over because that can, hormones are very Goldilocks. Too little hormones can, like your hormones are too low and cause problems. You're going to have a lot of symptoms. If your hormones are too high, 
It can also cause problems is with estrogen, it can start causing something called sex hormone binding globulin to, to rise, and that's going to bind up your hormones. You're going to have the same symptoms of low hormones than you did before. Also, it causes problems with the estrogen detox pathways. It can cause other issues. So you can have more symptoms with too high hormones. And so you want your hormones just right in the middle, like Goldilocks and the three bears. Let's see, Diane, can I start in February? I have pellets and we'll be traveling, but I can still pay now. You can definitely, so you have a couple options. Yeah, if you want to lock in like the price right now, because I know it's going to, we'll never have this low of a price after like this year. So you can pay for it and you can start whenever you want. You can say, I want to start in February, but you can still get access to some of the materials that we have for you. Or you can just pay for the first month and then put it on hold if you want to do the monthly. So either way, yes, just email support at glenaturalwellness.com. Jessica, who is that works in our office, or one of our excellent customer service girls will help you and get you started. Yeah, so you can definitely do that. Let's see, Zanina, I had breast cancer and invasive carcinoma 2.5 years ago. Chemo wasn't needed, but doctors told me that I needed radiotherapy, but I refused. I changed my diet. Awesome. I have exercise daily. I have a healthy lifestyle. I'm not on tamoxifen. Would like to know if I can start hormone replacement. Absolutely. We will have you fill out an intake form. So that's the first thing you do is you'll fill out an intake form. And there's two other forms that just like your privacy. So you know that everything's HIPAA compliant. And then just how our practice works. So you just have to sign that. We do look through the form. We will we'll analyze that and make sure that there's no other reason why you would not be a good fit. And then we'll start by testing your hormones. And then we'll start you on your dose. And yes, definitely. It's like I said, it's protective against reoccurrence. And it is protective against future other different types of cancer. So there's no reason if you're not on hormone suppressing medication, you're in good health. And just because you've had a, a breast cancer or because a family member has had breast cancer, there's no reason why you should not replace your hormones and improve your quality of life. Even the American Cancer Society and the Cancer Journal has stated that hormone replacement therapy improves quality of life and extends life and reduces all cause mortality. So that means dying for any reason. And so this is even the cancer journal has come out and said that. So it's not, like I said, the women's health initiative study was erroneous when they said that hormones cause cancer. And since then that has really been debunked, but unfortunately it's 20 years later and we're still talking about the headlines from that study, which weren't even correct. It's not your fault. It's just that it's been perpetuated over and over again, even though prestigious cancer universities have come out and said, no, that's not the case. There's actually a decrease in cancer for women who take estrogen. So it's only the synthetic oral progestin that caused any increase. And that increase is only one per 1,000. So it wasn't even, it wasn't even that big of a deal because those women who had that increase were also overweight and had other issues that were related to lifestyle and drinking more than two drinks a day and having inflammation due to excess weight. So being obese, that is a higher, those are higher risks that increases your risk for cancer much higher than having high levels of hormones. And when we replace your hormones as well, we're going to keep you in the healthy range. We're not going to give you excessively high levels. That's one of the reasons why I'm not a fan of pellet therapy, especially for women who are menopausal. Now, pellet therapy for women who are in their early 30s, that, that can work out because the high doses they can handle that is usually high dose like testosterone or sometimes high dose estrogen, but they can handle that at that young age because their other hormones are still high. However, for women who are perimenopausal and menopause, we see more problems than they're worth and we don't I don't, I'm not a big fan of super physiologic dose, so excessive doses of hormones. I think that it's not good for your body to have massive amounts of hormones at one time. Let's see, are your hormone creams 100% plant-based? Absolutely. Yes, they are 100% plant-based, no animal products, allergen-free, hypoallergenic, not tested on animals, all the things. I heard that plant-based doesn't give enough estrogen. I don't know where you heard that because that doesn't make any sense. It's the same. 
it's the same estrogen. It's the chemical component. It is estrogen. It's just the dose. So maybe a super low dose, but you can have a super high dose of plant-based estrogen. So I'm not really sure because it's, it's, it is, it's identical to the estrogen in your body. Just because it came from the chemical structure of the plant, it is turned into the exact hormone that our body makes. So there's no difference. You can lift on, you could pull out hormones, you can draw my blood and isolate the estrogen and look at the chemical structure. And then you can take the estrogen that's in our bioidentical hormones and isolate the chemical structure and you will not be able to tell the difference. So it's the same exact thing. Synthetic hormones like Primarin, those you will be able to tell if you isolated the estrogen in the synthetic hormone and you isolated the estrogen in the human hormone and you looked at the chemical structure, those would be different. So I don't know where you read that or heard that, but it's not true. Okay, let's see. What is the minimal estrogen dosage per day to prevent disease? It's going to be different for everybody. So it's where your level is at. So it's based on what your body needs. People metabolize hormones differently. People absorb hormones differently. Hormones get into the tissues differently for different people. So one person might need a higher dose than the other person. It's about what, getting your levels into the optimal range and keeping them there. Let's say I want to know if progesterone cream is protective against endometrial cancer. Yes, it does. Yes, it is. It's actually bioidentical progesterone. It does the same thing as it gets into your bloodstream the same way that when your ovaries release it, it gets into your bloodstream. The human body is not used to having estrogen or progesterone go through the digestive system and then going into the bloodstream. So it's exactly the same. See progesterone acetate synthetic that causes the increased risk of stroke and all the negative side effects. Let's see, is estriol a pregnancy hormone? I did cover that already. So if you just came in, I will send a replay out tomorrow where I talked about estriol and in the benefits. Let's see, after 20 years on BHRT, I developed, let's see, stage one breast cancer and had to go off hormones. I was on estrogen and progesterone. I love the hormones. They were capsules, not creams. What are your thoughts on this? One in eight women will develop cancer in the world, whether they're on hormones or not. Your survival rate was probably increased and your recovery rate was better because you were on the hormone replacement therapy. I don't think that is any reason why you should not be on hormones if you're fully recovered, if you're not on any hormone blocking medications. It could, I would definitely reduce alcohol, eat an anti-inflammatory diet with plenty of antioxidants, increase your melatonin, vitamin D, all the things that are going to help you prevent future occurrence of cancer. And those are likely the things that were related to also avoid chemicals and toxins, heavy metals, things like that. Those are all related to cancer as well. So yeah, it's just because you're on hormone replacement therapy, that it doesn't mean that you are ironclad. You can never get cancer. If you should get cancer, you're going to have a much higher rate of recovery and a much better recovery, but it's not, it doesn't mean you're never, it's not, I can't guarantee that being on hormone replacement therapy is going to prevent cancer because there's a lot of other things that come into place like lifestyle exposure, whether you live near a sewage treatment plant or, a, or overhead power lines, there's so many different things, but I'm glad that you recovered. And you're asking if you can use hormone replacement therapy. Definitely. It doesn't mean that you can't, but we would have you fill out a health history and intake and we would let you know if you're a candidate. Let's see. When I signed up, where do I get the bonus? The seven day hormone recharge that comes with your email. Yeah, it's, it comes in your email. If you haven't, if you don't see it, the link to that program, then just email our support at Glow Natural Wellness. We're happy to send that to you. Let's see, have you seen a 20 year old that, that have estrogen and progesterone? Oh, have you seen 20 year olds have low estrogen and progesterone after the pill or COVID vaccine? Yeah, depending on the type of pill, they are made to suppress ovulation and suppress the ability for your body to get pregnant, right? So they can suppress hormone levels. So when you're on the birth control pill, you're, the reference ranges that we test you on the birth control pill, reference ranges are going to be different than someone who is naturally ovulating in their reproductive years. So yes, that definitely can. And then 
having COVID or having some time to can having vaccines, your body can skip periods. You can have an ovulatory cycles where you don't ovulate. And if you don't ovulate, you're not going to make that progesterone. Yeah, there's a lot of different reasons why young girls might have issues. I personally, if you guys know my story at 20, I wasn't getting my period maybe but every three months, and I don't even think I was ovulating. I had horrible symptoms, though, of all the things that you'd associate with menopause, and doctors diagnosed me with primary ovarian failure. Basically, I was went to menopause at age 20. However, it was a wrong diagnosis. I found out years and years later when I back, went back to naturopathic medical school, I just had a lot of issues going on. I have heavy metal toxicity, parasites undiagnosed autoimmune conditions, thyroid issues. And so once I, and I grew up in an Italian household where we ate like pizza, pasta, pastries. I don't think I had a vegetable that wasn't like canned corn until I was in college. So I had a lot of deficiencies, a lot of exposures to things that weren't so healthy. And so once I was able to turn that around, I was able to get my cycles back. And I was able to have my son Paxton that you guys just saw recently. I had him naturally. And I did that at age 40. So that was like a hormone roller coaster as well. But there's a lot of different reasons why young girls might have issues. And most of them don't require hormone replacement. A lot of them are lifestyle, could be stress related, could be chemical exposure, might be thyroid or adrenal. Um, looking at the different things, looking at their body from a functional perspective can really help. But if they've on, been on the birth control pill, some time off of the birth control pill can really help to bring those cycles back. And just so you guys know, I'm not anti-birth control pill because I'm all about like women's rights and I'm all about the ability to choose. But there are there are side effects to the birth control pill. The benefit of the birth control pill is one, being able to not get pregnant. But two, for some women, they're using it to control bleeding or different things. And there's a risk benefit. It does cause nutrient deficiencies. It does put you at higher risk for clotting and not clotting in your period, but clotting like blood clots that can lead to stroke. So there are some serious ramifications that can be an issue. So it's a trade-off. And I'm all about giving women the right to choose. And that's really why I'm doing these free trainings and why I'm doing this Q&A, because I believe you should have the right to know if you want to do hormone replacement or not, whether that's through your own doctor, whether you work with us in the Healthy Hormone Club, whatever you choose, I think that you have the right to know because so many doctors aren't really discussing this and they're not really telling you the truth about your rights. And so anyway, I'm all about the right to choose. Are your claims considered bioidentical pharmaceutical? Yes, they're considered bioidentical, they're pharmaceutical grade. I don't know that pharmaceutical is like a, a real term, but they're pharmaceutical grade, they're tested, they're FDA approved, they're real USP, progesterone, estrogen, estradiol, estriol. So all the hormones are USP, and that means United States Pharmacopoeia. And what that means is that they are tested for purity, for potency, and for the amount on the label being the amount in the cream. So if it says 2.5 milligrams per gram, then that's what has to be in there. So that's what they're tested for. Let's see. I am on 100 milligrams of testosterone. You're on 100 milligrams of testosterone? Oh, that has to be wrong. Maybe micrograms? And um, even men don't take 100 milligrams of testosterone. So I, or are you maybe this is a man? I'm not sure. And six milligrams of estrogen, pellet, if that's the case, your testosterone is going to be like someone transitioning very much, very high. I broke out all of my face with acne. Yes, because no woman should be on 100 milligrams of testosterone. Most men don't even go on 100 milligrams of testosterone. Wow. Yeah, that's very definitely you don't want to get another one of those. Let's say I'm also on 100 milligrams of, of Prometrium. It made me groggy. I stopped taking it. I got the dose slow. It's 50 grams. Did stopping the Prometrium cause the acne? No, the testosterone caused the acne. Way too much. Not meant for women. Definitely can cause issues down the line. Can cause your clitoris to enlarge, so you end up with a little penis. Can cause your voice to lower. Can cause hair loss, belly fat gain, aggression, all kinds of things that some of them are reversible, some of them are not. So I would definitely not get another one put in. Progesterone and estrogen do kind of 
counteract testosterone. When your progesterone and estrogen are low, testosterone and testosterone is normal. So not super high, but normal. That can sometimes make the test you testosterone dominant. And this is why some women, as they get into perimenopause and menopause, their estrogen and progesterone decline their and their testosterone is still at the level that it was. It hasn't started dropping yet. And you can see some hair loss, you can see some weight gain, you can see some acne. And so sometimes bringing the estrogen and progesterone up can balance that out. But in this case, that's way too much testosterone. Yeah, I don't, wouldn't recommend that. Let's see, I already have osteopenia. Can that be reversed? Absolutely. Osteopenia can be reversed. Osteoporosis can be reversed. It takes some time, but definitely. So estrogen decline is the number one reason for osteopenia and osteoporosis. Additionally, there's dietary reasons. So not eating enough protein, not getting your minerals. There's not moving, you're not putting a stressor on your bones. So doing weight-bearing exercises, getting up and walking, doing squats, lifting weights, those things also help to build bone. Our bodies are not meant to sit around. Humans are not meant to sit in chairs all day, focusing on couches and sit in cars. We are meant to walk and run and move and lift heavy things. And our lifestyle sometimes contributes to osteopenia and osteoporosis. And so we definitely want to make sure we're getting our nutrition. We want to make sure we're getting our exercise. Sleep is important to help our body repair and rebuild, eating enough protein, and making sure your estrogen levels are maintained. Now, I say estrogen, but in some degree, progesterone and some degree, testosterone also contribute to bone health as well, but definitely. And it takes about, I would say, after a year on hormone replacement therapy, when you get your DEXA scan, you should see an improvement. Let's see, what is your opinion on CIRMS? That's totally different topic, so I'm not going to discuss that right now because it's a completely different topic. It's not about pause, perimenopause, or hormone replacement therapy. Let's see, since your hormone levels, but you can, you can email that in for a possible topic for a blog post or a YouTube video. All right, since your hormone levels change throughout the day, then is a dry blood test really helpful in determining proper dosage of hormones needed each day? All right, so I'm not really sure exactly what you're saying in that question, but when we hormone test, we, if you're still cycling, we have you test on a specific day of the month, and we are, we have you test in the morning, so we know what we're looking for, and we are looking for a certain range based on that time in the month, time of day, and the stage of reproduction that you're in, and whether or not you're on hormone replacement or birth control pills. So we take all those factors into play and we get a specific reference range for optimal. So that's how we do that. So we're not just testing any time during the day. We're not just testing any time during the month. We're using a specific time to take the test and we're looking at your specific situation. And then we have a reference range for where you should be and what the optimal should be. So hopefully that's helpful. Let's see, I'm 52. Do you stay on bioidentical hormone treatment therapy for the rest of your life? Or do you do periodic blood tests to tweak them out of hormone treatment that's required? Both or neither. Whether or not you stay on hormone replacement therapy for the rest of your life, that is a personal decision. I, I cannot tell you to do that, nor would I want to. So can't you can stay on bioidentical hormone replacement for the rest of your life. And you should be tested on a regular basis to ensure that you're at optimal levels and that if your doses needs to be tweaked at all. In our practice, we include hormone testing, follow-up testing every four months, no matter whether you're on the hormones for one year, whether you've been on them for five years, we're still gonna test your levels. It's a slight inconvenience. If, if some people are super busy, if they wanna push it to every six months, that's completely fine. But at minimum, every six months, you should be testing your hormones. And if you're still, if you're in the beginning of menopause, if you're in your first few years of menopause, or if you're in perimenopause, definitely test every four months. But once you've been on hormones for a while, if you've been in menopause for five years, you've been on your hormones for five years, you can switch it out. But definitely keep testing and to make sure everything's staying where they need to be. And you can be on hormones for the rest of your life, as long as it's bioidentical, topical, and you're at the right dose for you. And you're also doing healthy lifestyle as well. I will probably stay on hormones for the rest of my life. I have a son who's, you guys met him, Paxton, who's seven years old. 
I'm 48. And so I want to be there for his children. I want to be there for his high school graduation, his college, his marriage. And I want to be there for my grandchildren. So I have to live 200 years old and I have to be active and healthy and vibrant all those years. And I know that hormone replacement therapy will help me do that. It's definitely an option. I know Oprah says she'll be on hormone replacement for the rest of her life. Suzanne Summers, so many celebrities and actresses and people that you know about, they are huge advocates for the anti-aging therapy of hormone replacement. And yeah, I mean, it's totally, but it's up to you. Some people might just be like, okay, after 10 years, I'm going to just not use it anymore and see what happens. And you can always go back if you want to, because once you stop using your hormones, some of the symptoms will come back, like the, the skin elasticity, the collagen, that will start declining again. You might notice joint pain again, vaginal dryness, things like that. Most women who are more than 10 years past menopause, I think most women, not all, but most, won't have hot flashes anymore. They may or may not have the brain fog. That usually won't come back right away if you stop hormone replacement because your brain, there's a compound effect on taking hormones for a period of time. It like pushes back the aging process. So your bones, your brain, your heart, those will all benefit from any amount of time on hormone replacement. But as you go longer and longer without your hormones, then those areas can start to decline again. So hopefully that's helpful. I'm in my late 60s. My skin does not look good. My hair has thinned and I have continually hair shedding. I have vaginal atrophy. Yippee. Oh no. Am I a candidate for hormone replacement? Absolutely. Yes. I had a complete hysterectomy rather early and stopped taking synthetic hormones at age 42. I'm actually glad you stopped taking the synthetic hormones, but I'm not glad that you didn't have anything else. So yes, you totally can take bioidentical hormones. You, the dose of hormones that you're going to take is going to be physiological. So it will take some time to get your symptoms to reverse. It does take time once collagen is depleted and you've already started to get the saggy skin and the hair loss. It does take time to start improving, but it's gradual. You'll start to get like little baby hairs will start to grow in and you'll start to notice that your skin's more plump, it's holding more moisture. And then you'll notice, okay, it's looking a little better, but you'll still, you're still gonna have decline and it's just not gonna get worse, if that makes sense. And then other things like the vaginal atrophy that can improve, vaginal dryness can improve, joint pain, and you'll be protecting yourself from osteoporosis, osteopenia, heart disease, dementia, all those things as well. So you're definitely not too old in your 60s, not at all. There really is no upper age limit, even though you may have heard that you have to start hormones 10 years after. That again applies to the synthetic hormones. Doesn't really apply to the bioidentical hormones. There's no proof or research that shows there's any negative effect. There's only reduced benefit. So the older you are, the more time from the onset of menopause, whether it be surgical or natural, the more time away, the less, the longer it's going to take to have improvement. So you're going to have less benefit. And we're not going to give you more hormones just because you're older. So that's not going to help you. You're just going to have to, it's going to improve, but it's going to be gradual, if that makes sense. Let's see, I was prescribed an estrogen-based cream, but got an oral progesterone capsule with micronized progesterone. It's fine. As long as that's fine, it's, there is oral microdized bioidentical progesterone. That's absolutely fine. If that's what you're prescribed, there's, that's okay. I would keep taking that. You can do a topical progesterone if you want. You can talk to your doctor or your pharmacist if you want, but I don't really have a problem with oral micronized progesterone for most women. And so that's totally fine. If you want to sign up for hormone replacement, do we need a code to get the masterclass pricing or is that no longer available? You can go to healthyhormoneclub.com. So healthyhormoneclub.com and you will get the masterclass pricing, which is 53% off the regular price. So healthyhormoneclub.com. Now, if you have not yet seen the masterclass, you can go to fixhormones.com and you can sign up for the next showing of the masterclass. It's, I recommend if you're gonna, if you're thinking about doing a hormone replacement therapy, whether through the Healthy Hormone Club or not, totally recommend watching the masterclass. It's so educational, really explains 
so many things. However, if you've already seen it or you just want the low price, you already know you want to join the Healthy Hormone Club, go ahead and go to healthyhormoneclub.com. You'll click on the button. There's a button for whether you're in the U.S. or if you're outside the U.S., you want to click on the appropriate one. And then you'll be taken to a little order process where you'll enter your information. You'll select whether you want to do one payment per year or you want to break it up into monthly payments. And then you'll be sent your forms to fill out. We'll order your test kit. You can start. We have a portal now where there's a Healthy Hormone Academy. So it's videos to watch. You'll learn about diet, exercise, stress reduction. You'll learn about improving your sleep, toxin avoidance, pelvic floor health. So if you already have joined the Healthy Hormone Club and you don't have access to that yet, we just launched a platform on November 1st. So we're going to be moving everybody over to that within the next week or so. I just have to figure out, actually my tech team just has to figure out the most seamless way to do that. Yes. So healthyhormoneclub.com if you want to sign up for bioidentical hormone replacement with us or fixhormones.com if you just want to watch the masterclass. If you just have a question, let me know. Okay, let's see. It's 414. We're doing good. Let's see. I'm taking bioidentical hormones from a pellet insert. I sent my lab work to you to read. Long story short, my hormones are not balanced. I have testosterone overdose. See, are you guys seeing that this, what am I trying to say? Are you guys seeing this theme with the pellets? Women are getting overdose. Let's see. So I have testosterone overdose, low estradiol, along with low B12. I'm having severe side effects. I ordered several tests. Should I wait for a Dutch test to join? the club until my pellet insert is expired. I would actually recommend, since you have low estradiol, I'd recommend starting and we just would not give you testosterone. We'd actually help you to detox your testosterone. There's some supplements and herbs that can help your body kind of process that testosterone. And then we can boost up your estrogen and progesterone to counteract that. So I'd recommend that while you're waiting for your pellet to kind of blow out. And then We'll retest you once your pellet's kind of almost gone. And at that point, you might need an increase in your testosterone based on your symptoms. Because when we test you, we also do a complete sy symptom analysis so we can see what else you need. So yes, I would recommend going ahead and starting at least something. It doesn't have to be with us, but if you want to work with us, we'd love to help you. And we can start you on the estrogen to balance out estrogen and progesterone to balance out that testosterone. Sorry, but that is happening. I don't know why so many doctors are doing this. I'll tell you, actually, I do now. So I get advertised all the time. These companies that make the pellets, they'll pay for me to fly out to their training, which is three hours, where they'll teach me how to insert the pellet. And then there we go. I'm certified to do pellets. This is available for doctors who know nothing about hormones. There's chiropractors that do it. There's med spa workers who usually inject Botox. Now they're learning to inject pellets, but they don't have to have any education about the female endocrine system or how women's health goes downhill at menopause. All they're doing is inserting pellets and it's big money. It's very lucrative, but I'm not going to do that because I feel like it's not the best way to go for hormone replacement. What is the ratio of estradiol to estriol in your products? In our estrogen creams, they're all 80-20. So 80% estriol, 20% estradiol. We have a couple different strengths. So depending on the needs, you may get half a gram of estradiol per gram, or you might get one gram of estradiol per gram, and you might have different dosing. But it's 80-20, and that's what the body naturally... When you make estrogen, you make all three, and it's usually in that ballpark in the ratios. Do you have a customer service phone number? We do, but we don't have anyone working today on Sunday. But if you go to our website and go scroll down on the contact page, there is a phone number. We don't always have someone answering the phone. I will let you know we have someone training next week to start answering the phone during business hours because a lot of our, all of our workers are like doing consultations and doing things like that. But we do have someone specifically answering the phone next week. So if you want to give a call, but right now, if you call and leave a message, we will call you back during business hours either way. So you can totally do that. Yeah. You want me to look that up for you? Let me see. I'll grab that for you. Let me just go on my website. Hold on. I don't need to mute it yourself. Okay. 
Oh, it's on any page of the website. Just scroll all the way down. It's 855-928-4442. That's toll free. 855-928-4442. Today is Sunday. No one's in the office, but you can leave a message and we will get back to you usually within two business days. But if you call later in the week, we will have somebody answering the phone for you. Is your soy organic? I don't have any soy. None of our products contain soy. Our hormones are derived from the diogenin from the organic wild yam, but I don't have any products that contain soy. But if you're going to use soy, I do recommend you use organic soy, preferably fermented organic soy. And just on that side note, I will do a whole video on soy, but organic soy for women is actually healthy when used in moderation. For men, on the other hand, it's not healthy. It's actually bad for them. Now, women and men are two different things. Unfortunately, almost every study done on drugs, supplements, fitness routines, diets, pretty much everything is done on men, young, healthy men. And so women are not small men. And it wasn't until 1993 that any women were included in studies. And so in 1993, they actually passed a legislation that said, hey, women have to be included in these studies sometimes. Still, they're not included all the time because women are considered to be difficult because we have menstrual cycles and we throw things off and we're more confusing. But even studies done on rats, they use male rats. But soy in and of itself, fermented organic soy, when eaten in moderation, is not bad for women, but it's bad for men. All right, I'm ready to join your program when I found out your creams have aloe. I'm sensitive to aloe and sun lotion on my face. Okay, is what's the best way to figure out if I'm sensitive to aloe today? Email me and we can send you a sample of the base cream and you can try it and see if it has an issue. Yes, our creams are hydrating. They all do have that or aloe in them in the base cream. And that's usually true for most compounding pharmacies as well. They usually have aloe in the base cream as well. So you can try it. The worst thing to do if you're not sure you're allergic to it, you can see it's not, it's not like pure aloe. It's a small component in the base cream, but you could always check. So we can facilitate to send you out a sample of the base cream and you can let us know if it causes a problem for you. I'll give you enough to apply like an amount that you might apply if you're using a hormone cream for a week and you can see if you have a reaction or not, if that's okay. I don't know. When you said allergic, are you super allergic to where you might, no, you said sensitive. Okay. All right. So that's okay. I just don't want you to throw yourself into any kind of shock. But yeah, if you want to do that, just email support at glownaturalwellness.com and let them know that you need a sample of the base cream and we'll go ahead and do that for you. And if you're worried about the pricing, because, you know, this is a special situation, we will hold that until you determine whether or not it's going to be suitable for you. Let's see. I'm 56 years old. I had a hysterectomy when I was 37 years old. I still have my ovaries. Okay, great. So if you still have your ovaries, that means you could still, at that time, you can still produce your hormones on your own. My uterus and cervix were removed. See, I've been dealing with menopause, full menopause since I was 49 years old. So that's actually a good point as well, just for education purposes. When you have your, your when you have a hysterectomy where you get your uterus removed or your uterus and cervix and you leave your ovaries, at least one ovary behind, you can still produce hormones. Like they're not in surgical menopause yet, but the, there is good reason to believe that you're going to go into to natural menopause earlier than you would have had you not had the hysterectomy. 49. The average age is 51, so it's a little bit earlier than the average age. I've never done any hormone replacement. Earlier this year, I went to a functional medicine doctor and had an in-depth blood work done. My hormones are low. I've been on thyroid medication since my 20s, hypothyroid. Would you suggest I do at this point? I have been feeling terrible. My joints are hurting. My body aches. I've never got any hormone replacement. So I would, I'm partial to hormone replacement therapy because it's helped so many women. And here's the thing. Let me explain why I, why hormone replacement therapy is necessary in this day and age. So it used to be that women would, we'd have our lives and we, in our twenties, we have children, we get married. And then in our fifties, we'll start to decline. And then around 60 to 65, that would be the end of a good life and we would die. 
now we are living to 80, 90, 100. And so it's not fair for women to have from age 40, when we start perimenopause, all the way up until we die the half of our lives without any hormones. And so it's important for our brains, for our heart, for our boobs, for our, our bones, pretty much every everything for our uh, mental health. So anxiety and depression are skyrocket once our hormones are depleted, brain fog, not to mention the hot flashes and night sweats, the insomnia, joint pain, hair loss, skin integrity, the list goes on and on. Like I said, there's over 99 symptoms. And so, yes, I think that you would really benefit from replacing your hormones. You're not too old. And I addressed the cancer risk already. There is no increased risk of cancer with bioidentical hormones. In fact, they're cancer protective. I don't see any reason why you would not want to, if you want to use hormone replacement therapy. Again, it's not, it's a personal choice. I don't think that everyone in the world has to be on hormone replacement therapy or that I'm going to push it on anybody, but the option is there to improve your quality of life and to help you live longer, be more active, look and feel better, have a better sex life, just all the things, right? And to be on less medications, there's actually studies showing that women who are on hormone replacement therapy have less medications they are on, they're prescribed less medications because you don't need as many when you have reduced inflammation due to healthy estrogen levels. Let's say I'm currently using a wild yam progesterone cream. Will that affect hormone results? So if there is USP progesterone in that cream, so if there's actual progesterone in that cream, then yes, it would affect your hormone results. However, when we send out testing, we always will explain that if you're currently on hormones, you're going to take your hormones at a specific time in interval before the test, because we want to test you on your current hormones so we can see how you're doing on that dose. So we can correlate your symptoms to that dose of hormones and see what that dose of hormones equates to on your test. So if you're using something over the counter, chances are it's a very low dose or it may not even have what it says it has in them. A lot of them aren't regulated. And especially if it's not USP progesterone and the cream, it's called wild yam progesterone. I'm feeling that it might be a little suspect it may not be a regulated product. Uh, if you probably you can buy on Amazon, have no regulations. Oftentimes, what they say on the label is not all what's in the product. There is a whole like expose done on this a couple of years ago with many supplements. And the, they were bottles that have been relabeled to look like other products that were sold elsewhere, or they were expired lots of products and they were relabeled so they look like they were not expired. So I don't recommend buying any of these things on Amazon, whether it's supplements or hormones, but any of that. But if you're actually using real progesterone cream, then like I said, we will tell you when to take your last dose in relation to when you take your sample for the test, and then we'll be able to correlate that. So there's different levels, there's different reference ranges when we look at the test, whether you're on hormones or not on hormones. But if you're currently on your progesterone and you have a certain set of symptoms, we want to look at the testing on that cream so we can correlate your current symptoms, if that makes sense. Let's see. I'm currently on bioidentical hormones with the Wiley protocol since having a hysterectomy. I haven't been able to balance them. Can I get your help? Absolutely. We test on days 19 to 21. Does your program provide a static dose or does it follow fluctuations? It depends on the individual. So we don't have a set, absolute set thing for all women across the board. I'm not a fan of the Wiley protocol because they use ultra high levels of hormones that are definitely not healthy for the body. So it's not a, a protocol that I'd recommend anybody follow. Let's see, I'm currently on hormones. If, since I'm currently on hormones, how about we start? We would have you just test on your current dose with, like I said, timing the last dose of hormones 12 to 24 hours before your sample is taken. And then we'll be able to evaluate from there. Do you believe every woman should have a minimum dose of estrogen each day to prevent disease? I believe, yeah, that women should have healthy estrogen levels to prevent disease. Yes, I do. Because it's going to happen. Your bones are going to, your bones are going to get more porous. Your blood vessels are going to get more rigid and less pliable. You're going to have increase in your 
insulin resistance, you're going to have a decrease in the uh, nutrient oxygen and nourishment to your brain cells because estrogen is what facilitates the use of glycogen in your brain. And when you don't have enough estrogen, you have more amyloid plaques in the brain start to form. There's, you can look up, there's actually a TED talk done on the brain scans before and after menopause. And there's a lot more amyloid plaque with reduced estrogen. But yeah, I really do feel that if women want to live a long, healthy life, the one of the best ways to do that is with healthy hormone levels. We, we're, with hormone replacement, you got to remember, we're just replacing the hormones that your body needs for a long, healthy life. It's not, we're not adding something that your body's never had, and we're not adding something at a level that your body's not used to. It's just replacing hormones to that healthy, vibrant level that we deserve to be. Let's see, I'm using an estradiol patch. After a hysterectomy, is it advisable to add progesterone and testosterone? Should I stop the estrogen before being tested? Okay, I think I answered the question about stopping the hormones before being tested, so you don't have to. Yes, it's about hormone balance, right? So estrogen is great, but yeah, you want the balance because progesterone is also important for sleep, for reducing anxiety, for your bone and brain health. Testosterone is also important for energy and mood and then muscle tone and brain health as well. And to some extent, bone health. So you want things balanced. You want to be optimal in all your hormones, not just one, right? You don't want just one hormone to be balanced. You want all your hormones to be balanced. That's what I believe. Let's see. Are there medications or supplements that should be avoided prior to testing? So if you're on hormone replacement, you want to continue taking those and let us know that you're taking them. It depends on what you're testing. So if you're just testing your estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA, there's no supplements that are really going to make a difference there. Just make sure they don't contain any of those hormones if you're not stating you're on those hormones. So if you're on hormone replacement, you can continue taking it. And we're just going to note that on your requisition form so that the reference ranges that we're looking at apply to those hormones. But if you're taking a supplement that has like DHEA in it, then you're either going to want to note that down or you're going to want to not use it. If it's what I like to say is if it's not something you're taking on a regular basis, then avoid it because your symptoms are going to be correlated with what you're doing on a regular basis. But there's nothing else that you have to avoid before the test. Okay, let's see. Oh, people are doing the frog for Paxton in the Q&A. Let's see. Any differences between how medications and supplements can interfere with results? I think I just answered that. Is facial hair a hormone problem? What can be done? That's generally either a lack of estrogen and progesterone or excess of testosterone and DHEA. Those are androgenic symptoms. And so facial hair, especially dark facial hair, like if you get hairs around your chin, those tend to pop up as women enter menopause because their testosterone levels are still decent. So they might not be all, they might not be as high as they were when they were younger, but they're still pretty strong and their estrogen and progesterone levels are almost nothing. And so they become testosterone dominant. And what happens is then you start to get those androgenic effects of that facial hair. And that things like facial hair, things like hair loss on the head, belly fat, deepening of the voice, things like that. Now, if this can also happen if you have things like PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. So this is when your estrogen and progesterone are still pretty decent, or maybe your progesterone is a little low, but your testosterone is naturally higher. And so this is something that you can help a little bit with a couple of different things. So there's some medications that will help to reduce the androgenic effects of testosterone. And then there's also some herbs. So herbs like saw palmetto, pygeum, and nettles. That's a great combination for pushing the testosterone down the less androgenic pathway. So there's dihydrotestosterone or DHT, which is the androgenic metabolite of testosterone. So some people have more of a preference for breaking their testosterone down that pathway. In those cases, you can use those, that salpagium, uh, sal, salpagium, no, sal palmetto, pygeum, and nettles. I'm, I'm mixing them together. Sal palmetto, pygeum, and nettles. Sometimes NAC can be helpful too to push that pathway. And then there's also medications like spironolactone, 
which can help that push that pathway as well. You just want to be careful with the medications if you're planning to get pregnant because those can have some issues. So you have my uterus removed. How do I know when I have to test my hormones? Let's see, I have Hashimoto's. If I join the program, will you also check my thyroid? We can add on thyroid testing as well. We can pretty much test anything. So if you're in my program, definitely we can test your thyroid and help you with that too. Hashimoto's is autoimmune condition. So a lot of the help for Hashimoto's is going to be diet and lifestyle, improving gut health. But also we can support your hormone levels as well. If you're not getting periods, then you can take your hormone test anytime during the month. But we will give you instructions on that when you join the program, if you're working with us. Is there a standard ratio for estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone? We're going to look on your testing and get you into the optimal ranges. Let's see, I still have my period, feel well, I have weight gain and belly fat. My testosterone is non-existent. My OBGYN said she could talk to me about hormone replacement, but since insists that my internist says not to worry about my testosterone. I would go to somewhere else. All your hormones matter, not just one. So if they're saying not to worry that your testosterone is non-existent, that's not fair. That's not good. They're not looking out for your best interest. I would definitely find new doctors. Yeah, I agree. Um, doctors, sometimes doctors, only 20% of all doctors have any training in menopause, perimenopause, and hormone replacement therapy. So even your OBGYN or your endocrinologist, they are great at looking at your thyroid, at your adrenals, reproductive health, helping you get pregnant, helping you recover from pregnancy, checking to make sure the baby's growing, all of those things. They're good at that. However, they're not that great at thyroid sometimes though, because they only test like TSH and T4. They don't even do a full thyroid test, a lot of them. However, only 20% of doctors have gone to training after medical school to understand the female hormone decline phenomenon known as perimenopause and menopause and all the symptoms that go along with it. And that understand hormone replacement therapy. It's a very small elite group of people. Most of us know each other. That's how small a group it is. And so just because one doctor says, oh, you don't need testosterone or, oh, you don't need hormones at all. You can just take antidepressants. You can just take gabapentin. You can just take birth control pills. I've heard it all. Go to a different doctor. There's plenty of doctors out there. There's services like ours, like the Healthy Hormone Club that's available online, no matter where you are. So there's definitely options out there for you. So you never had HRT, 68 years old, you still could be a candidate. So definitely we will let you know if you ever would join, if you wanted to join the Healthy Hormone Club and there was ever a reason why after reading your health history, your intake, all your symptoms and all that stuff, if there's ever a reason why we're like, oh, this isn't a good idea for you, we would tell you, we would just refund your money. So there's no risk there. Were we supposed to send an email to claim the facts and get it? Support at glownaturalwellness.com. So email support, the word support, then at glownaturalwellness.com. And just tell us what you want, because we might not remember, and give us your address so we can mail it to you. And there's nothing else you need to do. Completely free, nothing you have to worry about. What do you think of Barbara Taylor's overall teaching? I think she does a lot of good things, but I think she also is very old school. A lot of her training is probably from 20 years ago. And so not all of it applies to our current methods now. Medicine has really changed in the last 20 years. So I think she's very against bioidentical hormones. I haven't listened to all of her stuff, but a few things I've heard, there's part that's good, but there's part that's like not modern science. But I think what she's doing is good because she's educating women about their options. But she's very pro-synthetic hormones from what I understand. Let's see, I'm 53. I was diagnosed with Parkinson's 20 years ago, and I have postmenopause. I've been postmenopausal for 10 years. What do you know about Parkinson's affecting BHRT or vice versa? You can see some improvement in your Parkinson's symptoms when your hormones are balanced, but it's not the cure to Parkinson's for sure. There's no contraindication between having balanced hormones or hormone replacement. With having Parkinson's, we have seen some evidence of improvement in symptoms like tremors or tics and things like that. So it definitely can be helpful. 
See, I'm 57 years old. My libido is very low. I have hair growing on my chin and weight gain. What do you recommend? Definitely test your hormones. I don't know if you're already in menopause or if you're still cycling. It's possible at 57, but chances are your hormones are pretty low. And definitely your estrogen and progesterone are probably very low. Your testosterone might be midline, but you might be testosterone dominant. So I would totally recommend replacing your hormones now so you can counteract some of the symptoms you're already experiencing and prevent other ones from happening. I get the saliva evaluation and hormones after sending it in. Sending it in. I'm not sure what you're sending in, but here's how the Healthy Hormone Club works, just so you know. You, you sign up. We send you a link to our portal. You get some forms to fill out. One is a medical history and intake form. The other two are just like general paperwork, HIPAA disclosure, things like that. Once you complete that, we review it, make sure you're all good to go. You're a good candidate. And then we will order your hormone test. We'll send you the test kit. Usually gets to your home if you're in the U.S. within the week. If you're outside the U.S., it might take two weeks. You'll follow the directions. If you're cycling, you'll have to take your test at a specific time during the month. If you're postmenopausal, you can take your test any day. Or if you're not sure, you can email us and we'll let you know when to take your test. You'll do the test. You can use either saliva or dry blood spot. If you have a blood test already that's done within the last three months and you are menopausal, there's certain situations where we can accept that test. And then once we have your results, it takes about two to three weeks for the lab to analyze your tests and get us the results. During that time, you can go through some modules to learn about different ways that you can start right now to balance your hormones naturally, to support optimal hormone health, to support your adrenals, your thyroid, and your body in having general health. When we get your test results back, you'll get a link to book an appointment with a hormone specialist. All of our hormone specialists are highly trained by me. And you will get on either a Zoom call or a phone call, whichever you desire. Talk about your hormone test results, talk about your symptoms, and then we will set up a specific protocol just for you. Within a couple of days, your hormones will be mailed out to you. So you'll get all your hormones. You'll have your dosing instructions. You'll have any additional instructions for lifestyle, diet, any at-home like special protocols to follow. And then every four months, we will test you again. If you have any questions, need any help, we're always available. You can book an additional call. You can just email, you can text through the app. So any of those things that you want to do, that's how that works. New hormones are automatically replenished. There's no additional charge for uh, any of that. That's all included in the program. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so another question, 57, menopausal, been in really great health, active, physically awesome. About a year ago, started experiencing weight gain despite good diet and physically active. That is so common. It's really one of the most common things I hear on my Instagram, on my YouTube, DMs on TikTok, Facebook. Women who are like working out, eating right, and then they're just gaining weight. And it's just, it really is due to the hormone decline, mitochondrial function going down because our body needs estrogen and progesterone for our mitochondria to work and our mitochondria, our energy production, little powerhouses of our cells. So if we can't make energy, we can't burn calories. And so our calorie burn goes down and all those things happen. Joint pain is also due to lack of estrogen. Our joints actually start to dry up a little, just like we have vaginal dryness. We have dryness in our joints as well and the increase in inflammation and the decrease in joint flexibility causes that joint pain. So yes, BHRT can help with both those symptoms, especially if you're already exercising. So when is the sale price? I think we might be writing the sale whole month. I'm not sure though. It'll say in your emails when the sale is over. I don't handle like those parts of the business. <laughs> I just handle the medical stuff. What is your price now after the discount? What does it include? Okay, so it includes all the things I just said. The regular price of the program is $2.99 per month or $29.99 per year, $2,999 per year. The sale price is $1,399 per year or $139 a month. It includes all of that testing, consultations, your hormones, um, the Healthy Hormone Academy, the intake, all, everything, support texting, all of that. 
So you don't really have to pay for anything. The only thing that additional that you'd have to pay for is if we tell you to include salmon in your diet, of course, you have to buy the salmon at the grocery store. If we tell you to, you might benefit from this supplement or that supplement, those would be additional, but the hormones are included. If you're in the U.S., the shipping's included, the testing's included, the consultation's included. I know it seems like crazy, but I'm trying to make this as affordable as possible, as affordable as possible. Most other companies, even if they seem to be low cost, they nickel and dime you. And then most of my fellow naturopaths, they're like, what are you doing? Because they're actually mad at me for doing it at this price because most of them charge $400 just to meet with them to determine whether or not you're a candidate for hormones. Then you have to pay for your hormones. You have to pay for all your tests and it can be very expensive. And my, why I do this, why I'm doing this at all is because I love seeing women like thrive and feel good and be vibrant. And I love the testimonials when they come in. I love hearing how like I saved their marriage or they're feeling better again and they're dancing again and they're going out with their friends now because they were antisocial before and now the hormones have changed their lives. I love that. I want the school bus driver and the lady that serves lunch at school and the barista at Starbucks. I want those women to be able to afford it, not just the elite, not just people who make a lot of money per year, six figures, seven figures, because I feel like it's so expensive otherwise to get your hormones replaced. And insurance doesn't cover it most of the time. Some people can get it covered by insurance, but it's very few. And where you're going to get covered is not what you want. And you're not going to get the testing because some reason the medical system is like double, it's like two-faced. A man can go into his doctor's office and have all the symptoms of low testosterone, he'll get his testosterone tested immediately and he'll get prescribed testosterone. A woman will go to the same doctor and have all the symptoms of menopause and she'll get offered antidepressants and she won't get, her hormones won't get tested. And if she's lucky and she complains so much and she really presses the issue, she might get some synthetic estrogen, maybe some progesterone, but she's never gonna get tested. And she's not going to get a choice of what hormone she gets. And yeah, it's just, I want to keep it as low price as possible. So hopefully I explained what it includes. If you go to healthyhormoneclub.com, it, it talks about what we include there as well. What day do new modules unlock? So it should unlock each week. The intro welcome module and module one will be available immediately. And then module two will be available next week. And then just full disclosure, I'm still recording some of the modules, but they should be available week three, you should have third module. If they're a little bit late, just know it's because I'm still recording them. <laughs> and if you're already in this program, you're like, what are you talking about the modules? I don't have any modules. We're moving everyone over to the new platform that has the modules in it. It's called the Healthy Hormone Academy. We just added that. We didn't increase the price. We just want to increase the value. So we're adding that and everyone and currently in the program will get access to that. It's just going to be probably within the next week or so, as soon as our tech team can get all your information bundled up and moved over. That's how that's working. In case anyone who is on this call is thinking, hey, I didn't get, what are you talking about? That's what I'm talking about. It's brand new as of November 1st. I've actually been at a conference until yesterday. I just got home yesterday, last night, pretty late. And I'm meeting with my team actually tomorrow to make sure that everyone gets transitioned over well. But if you're in the new site with the modules in it, they should unlock each week. If you have any trouble with that, just go ahead and message us at support. See, when I was in my 40s and let's see, I just need a drink. I'll just a little drink of my green juice. Okay. When I was in my 40s and still menstruating, I was on bioidentical progesterone cream. I developed fibrocystic breasts, which I didn't have before. Have you had, you seen this happen in your practice? And generally fibrocystic breasts are generally due to low progesterone and it can happen just genetically. So there's like huge, 50% of women have fibrocystic breasts. It just is, we have a lot of lymph nodes in our breast tissue and it's just the dense breasts that are, can be genetic or it can also be due to lifestyle. A great thing to do is actually castor oil packs over the breast tissue. I don't know if you guys know what castor oil packs is, but taking organic castor oil and you soak either a wool or organic cotton cloth in that and you just wring it out so it's really saturated. And traditionally it's done over the abdomen for like liver detox. 
but you can do it over the uterus to help with cysts and fibroids. You can also do it over your breasts. I just make a triangle and put it over. I'm going to make a video on this. I actually was planning to make it last week, but I got busy and I did not make that video. So I'm planning to make one soon for the YouTube channel, just how to do a castor oil pack to help with breast tenderness, to help with any scarring if you've had implants, and to help reduce fibroids and fibrocystic breasts. Let's see. What are your thoughts on why this would happen? Okay, I'm now 58 and I've been in menopause for three years. Would you recommend DHRT? Yeah, I, again, I really recommend it for anyone in menopause just because it's going to extend your life. Like I said, studies show that women on hormone replacement therapy live longer, have lower risk of heart disease, dementia, Alzheimer's, osteoporosis, and those are the big killers. Those are the, all the reasons why women die. And also lower incidence of breast cancer and uterine cancer and colon cancer. And I really don't see any reason not to. As far as the, the fibrocystic breasts, definitely having hormones balance can certainly help. You may have just had even too high estrogen and you might not have been on the right dose of progesterone. Maybe that was an issue. Let's see, can you please answer the question someone asks regarding supply chain issues? I don't know what that question is, but as far as our business, we do not have any supply chain issues. Our, our hormone creams are manufactured in the USA. We don't have any, we have a really close relationship with our manufacturer. We haven't had any supply chain issues at all. As far as our testing, that's also done in the USA. I don't have any issues with that. I don't know. I, if you want to put that question in the Q&A, I just haven't, there's so many things in the chat. If you're worried about hormones, oh, about, there is probably something about pharmaceutical hormone replacement. We're not having that issue because we manufacture our own hormones in FDA approved lab. Let's see, what are your current monthly costs? I think I just said that currently it's, the sale price is $139 a month. Oh, the link to sign up. Yeah, I will go put that in the chat. It's healthyhormoneclub.com. So I'll just stick that in there. Healthy. My keyboard, my keyboard's over here, just so you know what I'm doing. I look weird. Healthy Hormone Club. I thought I could cub. No, it's club.com. There you go. That's not a link though. I should put W. I can copy the link, I guess. Let me do it. Let me do it so it's easy for you guys. We will send a link with the recording. Copy. I'll put it right here. So you have it. Paste. All right, there we go. And I'll put that underneath this video as well for you guys watching the replay. All right, I feel like I have something on my teeth. Okay. Can a panelist answer my question? I'm the only one here. <laughs> What's your question, Liz? I'm sorry. I'm going through as many as I can. I guess if I don't get to all the questions, we have over hundred people on. So if I don't get to all the questions, we're going to do another one of these and another one. I'm going to do them until I get to all the questions. If you're in New York City, we can help you in the Healthy Hormone Club. If you want to see someone local in your area, I would just recommend like looking up, like Googling New York City hormone specialist hormone replacement specialist and just interviewing them as you would someone you're going to date. Like definitely just ask them questions and interview them like and move on to the next one if you get a bad vibe. So you want someone who talks to you, someone who is listening to you and someone who is willing to replace your hormones and test your hormones. Oh, I love that you guys are like supporting each other in the chat. So that's awesome. Okay, let's see. Something about, let's see, Danielle. I'm like trying to look through the chat. It's like you guys are talking about COVID vaccines. We can do another call about that. I'm going to keep going in the Q&A. So if you, your question in the chat, just put it in the Q&A and I'll keep asking. I, gr I agree with your take on pellets. I did it once. Testosterone was way too high. Yeah, I don't know why they're doing that. I'm not really sure why they make the testosterone super high. My experience in speaking with women, and we have lots of women who are in the Healthy Hormone Club who were on pellets before, but usually the first one is good, like it's a good experience. And then the second one is a nightmare. 
or sometimes the third one. But I'm just not a fan of super physiological doses, meaning super high doses of hormones. It's just, there's nothing good to be gained from that. Let's see, how long would the bioidentical hormones take to be effective? It's going to be different for everyone. You're going to get benefits. So especially if you're experiencing dryness or brain fog or fatigue or insomnia, anxiety, you're going to get incremental benefits. So you're going to see your symptoms get a little better right away and then a little better, better, better. Usually by three months or four months, that's as good as that dose is going to get you. If you're older, sometimes it'll keep getting better, but we'll adjust your doses and see where you're at. If you're younger, if you're not, if, if you're not like in your late 60s, early 70s, then you're probably going to get benefits a little bit earlier. But it also depends on your lifestyle, you guys. So if you're using hormone replacement therapy, but you're drinking a bottle of wine every night and you're eating McDonald's every day and you're not getting any exercise and your boss is yelling at you every day and you're in a horrible relationship, chances are you're still going to probably be depressed and have low energy. And so it's a combination of everything. Hormones are a great tool, but you also still have to have a healthy lifestyle as well, of course. The more, the healthier you are in your lifestyle, the quicker your benefits are going to be with the hormones. Let's see, I've been on BHRT for a year and a half. I'm on a progesterone along with testosterone and estrogen. My symptoms have improved, but I'm wondering if the dose is right. As I use only blood tests, what are, I want optimal results for sure. If you're on topical hormones, blood testing is not going to be the best. Serum testing is not the best. Topical hormones should be measuring either saliva or dry blood spot. So dry blood spot is your capillary blood and saliva is going to be obviously your saliva. That's going to give you your free hormones. Blood spot is going to give you your total hormones, but that's going to be, give you what's in the tissues. And it's going to be more accurate for topical hormones. Yeah, I would just work with your pr practitioner. If you think your results should be better, ask for an adjustment. If you're feeling good, then leave them where they are. What happens if your body isn't detoxing hormones properly? You'll end up recirculating your hormones and you won't feel as good. So we definitely recommend optimizing hormone detox with diet, with exercise, with gut health and sometimes with daily doses of nutrients to help with estrogen detox, like B vitamins, like DIM, things like that are super helpful. Will topical steroid ointment for eczema interfere with BHRT? No, you just probably won't want to put the, if you're doing topical hormones, you won't want to put them on the same application site as where you're applying your steroid ointment for eczema. So there's multiple different application sites you can use. You just wouldn't want to put like them right on top because it might hinder the absorption. Thank you for answering my question. Glad to hear. I, awesome. I hope to work with you soon in the program. You need an MD to prescribe hormones. Those to treat people and make a difference. I don't understand that question. Yeah, you should definitely work with a doctor not try to DIY hormones yourself. Can BHRT help a 24-year-old with ovarian cyst? Generally, that's probably going to be a symptom of excess hormones and improving hormone detox. So I would say probably not. Usually in the 20s, early 20s, teens, hormone-related imbalances are usually something that can be fixed with lifestyle. I would say not necessary. She can definitely do the castor oil pack over ovaries to help with that cyst. I would def definitely recommend testing our hormones. We offer a hormone trio test. It's going to test estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone on our website. Under you go to Blue National Wellness and you go into the shop, you can go to lab tests and then under hormones, it's a lot of clicks, but you can find us the hormone trio test. It's pretty affordable and you can test, she can test to see where her hormones are at. And she may just need to balance them out and maybe excess estrogen, maybe a low progesterone, if she's, if, see if she's cycling normally. So there's a lot of things that can be done, dietary lifestyle. She can try some Vitex, which is a herb that helps, it's a chase berry. It helps to kind of balance out estrogen and progesterone in women who are cycling nor regularly, younger women. So that can be helpful, just a little tip there. But definitely, I wouldn't say we go straight to hormone replacement, no. Is there anyone there other than those watching? Is there really anyone there other than those? I don't understand. I'm here answering questions. 
Uh, I'm not sure, Liz, what you're asking. Maybe rephrase the question and I'll try to answer it better. There's other people on the call right now asking questions, but I'm not sure what your question is. Let's see, I've already been diagnosed with osteoporosis. Can this program be paid by Medicare in a supplement? Our practice is not, does not participate in Medicare or insurance. However, you may be able to work with a local doctor who may be able to write a prescription for hormone replacement. They probably will not balance out your testosterone. They may give you estrogen or they may just give you a medication to help with your osteoporosis or like a shot. Sometimes they'll give you prolia or something like that to help with your osteoporosis, but there's side effects to that. It depends, but no, we do not participate in Medicare or insurance because that like ties our hands and doesn't let us look at the big picture and doesn't let us balance all of your hormones. See, I'm 52 and perimenopausal. Should I take bioidentical hormones if my only symptoms are dry skin and thinning hair? It's up to you, definitely, but I, it's the best time to start when your hormones are starting to decline. You can test your hormones and see where you're at. If it were me, I would, but it's up to you whether you want to wait, whether you want to take hormones at all, but I would recommend it. Is if I have IBD, is it a problem? Absolutely not, because we in our practice use topical hormones, so it doesn't have to go through the digestive system, so you don't lose any of it. And IBD and irritable bowel syndrome, irritable bowel disease, colitis, those can all be improved when hormones are balanced. It's not a contraindication at all. If you were doing oral hormones, that could be a little bit of a problem. If it will not work, is there any warranty? With health, related services, any medical services, any health services. We can't really guarantee anything, but we have had, we haven't had any would not get results if they weren't following the program. And we also can't, we don't, we can't police you to know what you're doing in your lifestyle, whether you're not sleeping or going out partying or doing, there's no way we can offer a guarantee because we don't have control over, we have to have you in a lab <laughs> to make sure you do everything perfectly. But if for some reason things are not working out and you want to quit, you can definitely do that. We will just charge you for the services you received so far. Is estrogel considered to be bioidentical? I believe it is. I previously had some extensive blood work to, to include a hormone panel. Can you use this plus other recent tests towards the program? We can, but it's still going to be the same price. We include everything in the one low price. Let's see, I am on Armour because I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's about one year now. I've noticed some bad acne occurring since I started. Could this program help me with getting off the armor? So we're not replacing thyroid hormone in the Healthy Hormone Club. It's only estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and DHEA. The thyroid issue, we have another program called the GLOW Protocol that helps with total body health. So adrenal, thyroid, gut health, liver detox, mitochondrial health, all of that, blood sugar, cholesterol, every other system in the body. That's naturopathic medicine for all of that. This is just hormones that decline due to perimenopause and menopause. Can osteoporosis be reversed even after taking Bonita for five years? Absolutely. Your bones are constantly remodeling. That means they're building up and breaking down. So you can definitely improve that with exercise, with diet, and with estrogen replacement. I've heard that a urine test is more accurate test for hormone levels. Dry urine tests, do you test hormone metabolites? So that you do not test total hormone levels. If you look at your, if you have one, you can look and see. We use the Dutch test in our practice. We love it, but it's not a test of your hormone levels. It's a test of your hormone metabolites that are excreted in the urine. There is not even a reading for progesterone on that test because they don't have any way to add up the metabolites to give them a an accurate guess of what that total progesterone is. We don't use that for the hormone levels. If you are someone who is not on current hormones and you want to use that test originally, we can make a guess based on it, but we'd prefer to use the actual numbers. But the metabolite tests are great tests and we do use those in our practice to see how your hormones are breaking down.
let's see, any hope for collagen and elastin, rest collagen and elastin restoration? Since the HRT is not helping me, I am extremely fit. It depends on how far gone it is. There are a lot of wonderful things to help restore collagen and elastin in the skin. Frequency is a great therapy that you can use at home or in, in a spa or in the clinic to help restore collagen. Estrogen replacement can restore collagen, as can eating a healthy diet. But there's a lot of things you can do. There's also injectables that you can use, like Sultra, which is injected into the skin and it stimulates collagen. There's other things like microneedling. I do microneedling, and a friend of mine does. She's an esthetician, and she's also a nurse. And she will do, it's like where they, basically, there's a little machine that she has, and it injects little tiny, makes little tiny punctures into my skin, and that, um, forces my skin to want to repair itself and it basically helps to induce collagen. So it's collagen induction. So there's a lot of different things you can do if the hormone replacement alone is not doing it for you because it depends on how much the decline has happened. It's not, there's definitely not a miracle. All women will lose collagen, but when our estrogen declines or collagen, like 30% of it in the first like one to two years of menopause, we lose, we lose 30% of our collagen or elastin. It's a lot. It's really huge. So if you can catch it before that with hormone replacement therapy, you can prevent it. But if you're after the fact, you might need to do a few different things to bring back that collagen. See, I had a total hysterectomy several years ago. My PCP did lab and said my hormone levels are within range. All right, let me explain that. So hysterectomy. Okay, I don't know if the ovaries were removed or not, but when you do a hysterectomy it, you're, and your ovaries are removed, you're automatically in menopause. There is a menopause range for hormones, and that menopause range is and on a blood test, it's like zero to 20. It's like nothing. For estrogen, it's like zero to 20. A woman who's cycling is going to be like at 400 and something. You, it would be normal to be in the menopause range, but what's also normal in the menopause range is lots of collagen hot flashes, insomnia, brain fog, depression, anxiety, bone loss, all the things. And so, yes, you can be normal for menopause, but we're not looking for normal for menopause. We're looking for optimal for being a woman. And yes, a lot of doctors will say that. They'll look at the test and be like, oh yeah, completely normal for a woman who's your age or has had a hysterectomy to have no hormones. But those doctors have no training in optimizing health for women who are over age 50. Let's see, you're 63, hysterectomy 10 years ago. Definitely hormones can help with your mood swings, weight issues, facial hair, vaginal dryness, brain fog. Yes, that's what it's for. Let's see, with the Healthy Hormone Club is ongoing support from Glow Natural Wellness Hormone Specialists only available via chat. Is there any way to communicate via Zoom or on the phone? Absolutely. Just ask if you've already had your, so your initial consultation to go over your testing is always on either a phone call or Zoom, your choice. If at any time you need help, we have, right now we have 10, 10 hormone specialists that I've trained personally that I meet with every week to discuss any cases that are a little bit unique or I'm on, I'm texting every day with my hormone specialist to see if they have any questions, if there's any support. I, it's like a direct access to me and my knowledge through them. And they are highly caring. They are compassionate. They are knowledgeable. They are trained medical professionals and they are good at what they do. But at any time you want to talk to them on the phone, they'll pick up the phone and call you. We're here to support you, definitely. When is the deadline to sign up for the reduced price? We will send that an email. I'm not exactly sure. I'm sorry. I don't handle like sales. I don't handle marketing. <laughs> I, I'll answer all of your hormone questions though. I have the most, the F, okay, I'll, I'll tell you a secret. You guys want to know a secret? I run this company with my husband. We are not a, like, Wall Street corporation. So if you need a extension on the sale price, because any reason whatsoever, you need to ask your husband, you need to get back from vacation, whatever, just email support at the National Wellness, say, hey, can I have until this date? I want to sign up, but I need to wait until this date. We will literally tell you, yes, just send us, just reply to this email when you're ready. 
and we'll let you in. I just want to, I want to help people. We want to help people. And it's not always about the money. So yes, we will give you the sale price if you need it. Just let us know during the time. If you email us, you're still eligible for the sale price, then we will make an exception for you almost 100% of the time. Don't just email us though if you're not planning to join up, just to waste our time because we can be helping somebody else during that time. So anyways, <laughs> uh, see, I had most of my thyroid removed 30 years ago, abnormal cells, been on synthroid since. How would HRT affect this? Would I go off synthetic? No, if, unfortunately, since you've had a lot of your thyroid removed, you're probably going to be on thyroid medication for the rest of your life. The good news is that Estrogen and progesterone are also important for thyroid function when in healthy ranges. Another reason why pellets are no good is because high levels of hormones can inhibit thyroid function. So again, it's Goldilocks. Too low of estrogen and progesterone can inhibit thyroid function. Too high levels of estrogen and progesterone can inhibit thyroid function. So optimal levels of estrogen and progesterone support healthy thyroid. So you're going to get the most out of your thyroid when your hormones are balanced. So no, you don't need to stop taking your synthetic synthroid. And with thyroid hormones, synthetic is pretty much the same as not synthetic. It is pretty much the same. It's different with hormone replacement, with estrogen and progesterone. There's not really any negative side effects of synthroid. Okay, so you don't have to stop taking it. I started perimenopause at 35. I had an ablation about 38, 39. Never had hormone therapy. I'm 56. Am I a tough case? I wouldn't say you're a tough case. You're still eligible for hormone replacement therapy. I am sorry that you weren't given any hormone replacement therapy because you should have been given that option. But now is, I always say, there's an old proverb that says the best time to plant a tree is 10 years ago. And the second best time is right now. I feel the same way about hormones. Like the best time to start taking hormones is when they're starting to decline. But the second best time is when you think about it or when you learn about it or when you're experiencing symptoms. Yeah, I think you're fine. I don't think there's anything difficult about that. Let's see. My UK doctor put me on estrogel, 750 gel of estradiol. She says it's a natural hormone. I'm not sure. I believe that is a natural hormone. The easiest way to tell, because I don't know all the brands, but the easiest way to tell is if you read on the label, if it says estradiol, if you're in the U.S., it'll say USP estradiol. If you're in the U.K., it'll say estradiol. And it won't have any other words. It won't say any other like ethanol estradiol or acetate or it won't have any like other things around it. It'll just say Either in the UK, you have an O before your estrogen, so it's O-estradiol or o estriol, but it won't have any other words around it. And then for progesterone, it'll just say progesterone. It won't say medroxyprogesterone, it won't say progesterone acetate, and it won't say progestin. So hopefully that would make sense. I think, I think you're okay with those medications as long as just ask the, if you're not 100% sure, Call the pharmacy and ask them, hey, is it bioidentical? Is this actually progesterone and estrogen? Is there any synthetic component? And they will tell you. Is hair loss a result of menopause? It can be. It can also be a result of low thyroid. It can also be a result of nutrient deficiencies, high stress, being very sick. And with hair loss, if you have a stressful event happen or a car accident or you get COVID or the flu or any like serious like thing that like affects you mentally or physically, hair loss will happen three months later. So hair loss can start three months later because the hair cycle is a long cycle and what happens today can be affected three months from now. Low protein intake, nutrient deficiency, doing the keto diet for too long for some people or restricting food, fasting for too long for some women can cause hair loss as well. And for some women, there is a genetic component. So if you look at members of your family and if they start losing their hair at a certain age, there is a genetic component there. So it could be just genetic, but hair loss is also a symptom of menopause. If you notice when women are pregnant, 
they have that glow, they have thick, shiny hair, and that is a result of the estrogen progesterone increase. So the decrease can cause hair loss. Would bioidentical prevent dementia? It can be a component in preventing dementia because of the ability to prevent the amyloid plaques and to help nourish the brain cells. Also, when your estrogen and progesterone decline, your hippocampus, the part of your brain that makes you, and also the part of the brain that regulates temperature, shrinks. And so that can also cause issues with confusion, brain fog, and eventually lead to dementia. Additionally, there's other things that can contribute to dementia, including nutrition. So it's not the only thing and also genetics. So it's not a be all end all. Same thing for Alzheimer's. So those two questions are back to back. So yes, it can help. It is be preventative for Alzheimer's, especially if there's a history or a family history or a tendency genetically. Definitely it can be helpful because it's going to help to support better brain health overall. And of course, eating healthy foods, healthy fats, omegas, antioxidants, those are all helpful as well. Do they have periods at age 58? You can. Oh, you mean with hormones? I have friends who are on bioidentical still have periods. It's not normal. There are some super high dose hormone protocols that will give you a period. Not in our practice. There are like le probably less than 7% of women who at the start in the first three months of hormone replacement can have some breakthrough bleeding or spotting, but that generally goes away after a couple of months. If these women are on bioidentical hormones and having their periods, they're generally on super high dose hormones that's not recommended. Does having rheumatoid arthritis change anything about taking hormones? It makes it a, a reason why you should take them more and um, rheumatoid arthritis gets worse with estrogen decline and better when taking hormone replacement. So it's just another reason why you might consider hormone replacement therapy. What do you do to test hormones, blood, urine, saliva? So blood testing, serum testing is great for testing hormones, as is saliva, as is dry, dry urine or a blood spot. For testing topical hormones, however, um, saliva and dry blood spot are best because you're going to actually see the difference. How long does it take to get saliva test results and hormones after sending in the saliva test? About three weeks, two to three weeks, depends on the volume at the lab. Do you ever use a dry urine test? We do. We use the Dutch test and we use one by ZRT and Meridian Valley Labs. It's great for testing to so looking at cortisol levels. It's great for looking at hormone metabolites and the pathways. So they are good tests, but just not for replacing hormones, not to look at the levels, just to look at the metabolites. Is estrogen okay? I think that's a supplement. I'm not 100% sure. It's just a bunch of nutrients. There's nothing, if you like taking it, there's nothing wrong with that. It. It's not going to increase your hormone levels, however. But if some people notice, like they feel better because they're getting those additional nutrients and herbs. See, when I was in my 40s and still menstruating, I was on, oh, I already answered that question. Okay, do, do you have unlimited access to the program? Are you talking about like the Healthy Hormone Academy program? Yes. As far as like support, yes, within reason. I don't, I, we hope that someone doesn't like call us every hour, but you have as much help as you need. I think that's what you're talking about. Can you offer a further discount to Canadians? So, unfortunately, this, the pricing that the discount that we're giving you is really, we're really breaking even by the time that we pay for the testing. So we have to pay the lab for the test. We don't own the lab and then pay for the hormones, pay for shipping, pay our staff, pay for the site maintenance and all that. So we're really not making, it's as low as we could possibly make it and still be able to offer the program without having to shut down. <laughs> so unfortunately, I'm sorry about the exchange rate. Hopefully maybe it changes. I don't really know how bad that is, but it's the lowest we could possibly offer. I'm sorry. We try to make it as affordable as possible, but you can break it up in the payments. So we try to make that an easier way to do it. That's why we offer the monthly payments. You're not paying per month. You're basically paying for the year, but you're making payments to make it easier on your budget. You can use in the United States, you can use your HSA and FSA. 
dollars. So you can use those if you have a debit card or if you need us to invoice you individually. So you can use those. That's an option as well. What mode are hormones delivered in? So they can be delivered in many different modes. They can be delivered orally through a pill or sublingually through a trochee. You can do a patch. You can do topical creams or gels. You can do injections. I think that's all of them. You can do vaginal hormones. Yeah, so there's a lot of different ways. Our hormones in our Healthy Hormone Club are topical. They're creams. And then the vaginal hormones that are coming out in the next month are gels. What is your email? A uh, support email is support at glownaturalwellness.com. I will pop that down in the chat. Support at glownaturalwellness.com. And if you're watching the replay, you can just pop your question below. There we go. Are there any natural hormones in a cream, tablet, or capsule available? Yes, there are. And I think I just talked about that a second ago. How many minutes will the personal consultation be? It depends on how much you have to discuss. Um, some people do it in 15 minutes. Some people have more questions. So it takes a little longer. It depends on how long, how much you have to talk about. Support at GlowNatural, GlowNaturalWellness.com. So I put that in the chat down there, Diane, so you can see. Our company name is Glow Natural Wellness. So it's support at GlowNaturalWellness.com. Or you can just respond back if you got the reminder to be here. You could respond back to that because that's the same address. But it's better if you put in the subject line what you're talking about because it'll get back to you faster. Would you recommend taking bioidentical hormones even if no more flashes? Menopause 2019, but skin going down and extremely tight. Yeah, our hot flashes are just one of the 99 symptoms of menopause. So everything from increased insulin resistance, to joint pain, to skin sagging, hair loss, dry hair, nails cracking, the list goes on and on. Depression, anxiety, trouble sleeping, those are all symptoms. So yeah, you don't have to have hot flashes for you to take hormone replacement, although in conventional medicine, they will only give you hormone replacement if you have severe hot flashes. But no, you take you bioidentical hormones can be great for even if you just want to prevent osteoporosis and you don't really have any symptoms, you can totally take hormones. Let's see. I was told blood tests are only reliable way to test hormones. Yeah, if you're taking topical, here's how you can prove it to yourself. So you could do a blood test. You could take a bunch of topical hormones. You could do a blood test again. And you're not going to see any increase. Yeah. Let's see. I was advised saliva was not good. Excess adrenaline can cut off blood flow to saliva. Well, th there's there's plenty of science on saliva tests that you could look up online. It's really the saliva and dry blood spot are really the only way to measure topical hormones. We actually see a lot of women in our practice who their doctor was nice enough to, to prescribe hormones and they're on topical hormones, and then they do a blood test and shows they have no hormones, and so they get more topical hormones, and they do a blood test. And their hormones haven't changed, so then they get more topical hormones. And they come to us on overabundance of hormones. Their symptoms are not helping. And then we test them, and they have super high levels on saliva. And then we balance them out, and they feel a lot better. So that's how I know. Let's see. My test showed very low testosterone, progesterone, estrogen. Let's see. Estradiol was high. All right. Uh, I don't know if that's a question, but you definitely want to balance that out. Possibly some estrogen detox, take some DIM, look for estrogens in your environment, like plastics, pesticides, Teflon pans can be estrogenic, receipt paper, BPA. So things that can be like xenoestrogens in the environment can be bringing your estrogen level higher. All right, uh, let's see. Would you recommend taking bioidentical hormones? Oh, I already asked that, answered that. My 16-year-old daughter lost her spleen in a car accident at age six. She suffers from ovarian cysts. Any thoughts? Yeah, I would definitely take her to a functional or naturopathic physician who can help her with a multitude of things. Ovarian cysts are common with conditions, possibly polycystic ovarian syndrome. See so if she has increased androgen levels like DHA and testosterone is a good idea to get that checked out and balanced now. She probably would benefit from anti-inflammatory diet. We have some information on our website about ovarian cysts and polycystic ovarian syndrome. She can totally do the castor oil packs to help with 
breaking up the cysts and reducing those and looking to see if our hormones are balanced and testing her and seeing. At 16, she's probably going to go through a lot of fluctuations and changes. So I wouldn't recommend hormone replacement for her right now, but possibly she might benefit from some progesterone if necessary, but I would definitely look at the big picture to be able to make any decisions there. All right, so this person is saying that their Dutch test and it showed one thing, blood tests show normal hormone levels. Yeah, because the Dutch test is going to be your metabolite, so it's not your actual levels. The blood test, if you're not taking any hormones, is going to be pretty accurate for your levels right now. So if you're on the lower side of normal, chances are that you can benefit from some hormone replacement. Let's see, E1 and E2 were low, E3. I think you're saying E3 was high or estradiol was high. Oh, it's the same person. I think that I was talking about the xenoestrogens can be an issue, or you could be not, you could be recycling your estrogen. So it could be gut health that you're not breaking it down and excreting it from the body. So it might be a question of improving your microbiome. What supplements would you recommend when on HRT? I'm pretty active. It depends. I definitely recommend a multivitamin, multimineral, some DIM to support estrogen detox, possibly magnesium or vitamin D if you're low, a probiotic to help with gut health, which could then help with estrogen detox as well. But other than that, eating a healthy diet, I'm not a huge proponent of taking a bunch of supplements if you don't need them. I understand that hormone issues cause brain fog. What is brain fog? <laughs> brain fog is just a term for like foggy thinking or not being able to think clearly. I know my brain doesn't feel right and I can't explain it to people. I can't concentrate, but I don't want to concentrate because it takes a lot of effort. Sounds like it could be brain fog. Yeah, like it's just like sometimes not being able to find the words that you want to find, having trouble like putting together concepts. It could be a little bit of memory issues. So it's like a catch-all term. It's not a medical term at all. It's just something that we say. There's memory loss, there's difficulty concentrating, there's limited recall, there's confusion. So those are all terms that are lumped into brain fog. And yeah, hormone replacement can help with that. It's because estrogen is really important for the brain to be able to utilize glucose for energy. And when we don't have that, we start to form plaques in our brain, and then we're unable to have that function there. How long does it take for your team to make initial contact and send the kit? Generally, like within one business day. So the first thing, when you sign up, the first thing is we're going to email you. You're going to get five emails. You're going to get access to your portal. You're going to get forms to fill out. So the sooner you fill out your forms, the faster we can order your hormone test. The next business day, we will, or sometimes the same business day, as we get your intake form back, depends on what time of day we get it. We'll get your tests ordered and your kit will get sent right away. So we're actually really fast. We're pretty efficient when it comes to that. And then you have access to Healthy Hormone Academy while you're waiting for results to come back from the lab. And then once you get your results, you can book that consultation. Your hormone creams get sent out the next day after your consultation. You have all the instructions, all your everything you need to know. If you're within the U.S., generally within five days, you'll get your hormones and start using them according to our instructions. You can access your hormone specialist or anyone on our team should you have any questions. And then there's no delay after that. Your tests come every four months. Your hormone hormones get replenished before they run out. So there's no waiting after the initial getting you getting you started. It's faster than anywhere else you'd go because you generally you would have to book an appointment. You'd have to wait for your appointment. You have to go to the office. They talk to you, decide if you're a good fit, then they may or may not test your hormones. So it's going to pretty much be faster to just use us. <laughs> but we'd love to help you. I do it's right for you. If you prefer going somewhere locally, I'm just happy that you have this information. And all I want is for you to get the relief that you deserve and be able to have the vitality and the longevity and the benefit of hormone replacement. Yeah, so there's no upper age limit. So if you're 70, if you're 60, if it's been more than 10 years since your last period, that is old news. That is science from 30 years ago. There's not a cutoff. There's not a cutoff for hormone replacement. You could totally do it. 
see. We have access to your platform after we get off hormones, get our hormones balanced is what I want you to know. Oh, so once you get your hormones balanced, then you would keep using hormones to keep them balanced. So if you get your hormones balanced and you stop using hormones, then your hormones will become unbalanced. And yeah, if you discontinue the program, then yeah, you won't have access to our patient portal anymore, unless you're in one of our other programs, then you might have access to it. So I think that's what you're asking. Yeah. And access. If you're purchasing either a, an annual, you're purchasing an annual membership into the Healthy Hormone Academy, which includes your testing, your hormones, your support, your consultation, your medical history review. And then if you want to continue, keep your hormones balanced then you would continue. If you want to stop, then you won't have access to any of that stuff anymore, but you will have used it already, hopefully. Thank you for your time. Oh, my skin looks amazing. Thank you. I actually don't even have makeup on you guys, but Zoom sometimes makes your skin look better. I'm going to just be completely honest. I have a light in front of me because it's dark outside, so that always makes my skin look better. But yeah, I just been using, um, I, I'm doing that microneedling. I, I really think that's super helped. It's called microneedling. You can look it up. Med spas do it. Some dermatologists do it. It doesn't really hurt. Uh, it feels a little uncomfortable. And my skin was super red. Looked like I had a sunburn about three days after, but you don't really peel. And it really, I have really big pores, especially on my nose, but they shrunk quite a bit from the microneedling. So I highly recommend that. If you guys would be interested, let me know like in the chat if you want me to take you with me next time I have it done so you can see what the procedure looks like because I'm willing to share that stuff, but I highly recommend it. I go to a girl, it costs me expensive. I it cost me like $300 each time, but, and I'm going like once a month, but you don't, you don't have to go that much. And then after about 12 times, I think you're done for a little bit. I'm not really sure. I really like it. It's like relaxing for me because I tend to work a lot. So it gives me time to do something for myself. Let's see. So yeah, thank you though. Thanks for saying that. I have to sign off now. It's been two hours and 20 minutes. I know I have to go to dinner pretty soon. I think I'm going to be late, but I'm going to answer two more questions and then I will do another one of these and I will download your questions and I'll try to film quick little videos over the next few days. My pharmacist and MD told me hormones do not help for the skin. What do you think? I'm going to make a video for you guys about how hormone decline affects your skin health. And I'll pop that onto YouTube for you guys in the upcoming weeks. It's really interesting how we lose our collagen and elastin at age, we start to lose it after age 30, but we rapidly lose it 30% within the first three years of menopause. In 2011, I had brain surgery. Men meningoma tuna, <laughs> I can't talk, <laughs> meningitis. I was on steroids for brain swelling earlier this year, di diagnosed with bone infraction. Will BHRT help me in slowing the issues down? Progesterone specifically is well studied for helping the brain heal after traumatic brain injuries. And estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone are all really important for brain health. So I think that it will definitely help and also with your bones as well. I'm going to prescribe hormones without doing any testing first. Is it dangerous to start? I don't really want to say it's dangerous, but it's not optimal to not know what, where your levels are. But it's standard of care. Standard of care in the United States is not to test hormones, just to give everyone standard dose. I just don't believe that's the best way to do it. I was taking 100 milligrams of oral progesterone and stopped until my dose was lowered to 50. I have read and signed a contract for a med spa. Please do not skip doses of this medication as it can result in vaginal bleeding. Okay, so the reason why is because if you immediately stop your progesterone, then it can, and you're still cycling, it can bring on a period, yes and increased risk for endometrial cancer. If you're also taking estrogen, then you want to take progesterone to protect your cells in your uterus. So you never want to take estrogen without progesterone if you still have a uterus. And if you're still cycling and your progesterone is really low, you should also take progesterone. But just call your practitioner and talk to them about reducing your dose. As long as you're taking some, if they lowered your dose to 50, then 
it's, you're fine. It's just, you don't want to stop taking it all together because it'll bring on a period more than likely if you're still cycling. All right, you guys, I got to the end of the Q and A questions. I know there's still some questions in the chat and I will do another one of these in the next couple of days. I'll give you guys an update of when that will be. If you still have questions, please come join me. And it was so nice speaking with you. Love you all. And I will talk to you soon. If you have more questions, you're watching the replay, pop down below the replay video. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.